morning. Today I'm going to be working on another Vue.js and because I haven't done a longer stream in a while, it's been kind of one hour a week, so I really wanted to do more of a hackathon style stream so hopefully I can make it two, three hours today and build a whole application. So hey Marble Wraith, how are you? This is the planning that I did for the app anyway. So basically, I don't know, have any of you played uh, Cookie Clicker before? I don't know if I want to bring this up, but there's this old uh, browser game that I used to play called uh, Cookie Clicker that ate way too much of my time. Yeah, it should be at this, it's at a strange URL. Let me zoom in here. Ortiel.dashnet. And then I click on Cookie Clicker, and it's basically, it just gives you a cookie. And it's a, it's a clicking game, so you click on it. But then there's the items over here that you can start buying and crazy stuff starts happening in the middle and all sorts of things. So I'm not gonna get into clicking on cookies right now, but you can check it out if you want. Anyway, so this is kind of a knockoff version that I've been planning to do. Um, it's called Kitty Clicker. And I actually planned this app back in, if you see when the repo was started, it was almost a year ago now, back in 2019 when I planned it. Um, but yeah, and then I ended up using it to teach at a couple of coding programs. So anyway, I've been wanting to build this in Vue for a while, so I decided this would be a good kind of fun app to build. So if you check out the repo, you can see the mockups, the different screens. I basically broke it down into the MVP, like the obviously the uh, minimum number of features that I need to get a working app. And then I have what it would look like in version one and then version two as I build out more features of the app. So I'll see how far I get. And then there's also a store where you can see all the items full screen and see each item as well. Oh, and a welcome page. So you can choose your cat's name and image, and that's going to be the image of the cat that you click on. That's basically it. I'm going to go ahead and get started. So in this repo, you can see there's just mockups, read me that, that type of thing. Yeah, so I haven't started the actual Vue.js application. So I'm going to pull up my terminal and I think I should be able to you can see, oops, oops. All right, uh, you can see I have uh, that already cloned locally. And now I think I can do view create um, and then give it a name. So kitty clicker, and then maybe, oh wait, that has to be hyphenated, the name, kitty clicker. And then I think I can do a period and that might put it in the current directory. Okay, so I guess it won't, but that's okay if it's in a subdirectory. Okay, so demos, let's see. So in the requirements for the app, I need some navigation. I'm also gonna be using state management, especially when I go to persist to data. So I think I'll go ahead and install, yeah, Vuex, Vue Router, everything. So I'm just going to use my normal one, um, so I don't have to go through all of the steps. So I get SAS, Babel, uh, Progressive Web App. If I wanted to use those, Router, Vuex. Of course, I need ESLint, and then testing if I want testing. All right, this always takes a minute to create, though it is faster now with V3 versus the creation of v2. I was going to continue your tutorial on v3. Oh, cool. Yeah, it's funny that tutorial was going to be an hour and a half. And then I just kept wanting to do more things. So yeah, I do. I am going to add on to it, like do a Vuex and view router portion. So I just haven't gotten or I did post a view router video on my channel actually. 
Oh, by the way, if you want to see the repo I'm working on, yeah, I have it updated so you can always see where the current repo is. How are you liking Vue so far? Or did you already use another framework? S S Wine? All right, so Kitty Clicker is cloned. Yeah, so now it's, a, it's in its own directory here. So I have the code open. I wonder if I should, can I pin this as the root? I guess I probably could, but maybe I wanna keep this open so I can see the mockups and everything. So I'll just open this separately. And since I'm, I'm running this app from the terminal, so I'm actually going to go into my actual kitty clicker here. And now I can run. So um, when I created the view app, it automatically did an npm install. So I just have to run the view startup script that it gives me, which is the serve command. So I can run the local dev server. So npm run serve, and that should open up at local host port 8080. All right, and you know what would be kind of a, oops, a nice PR to add is it's weird, it zooms all the way out. Uh, to add to this is dark mode to the initial screen. All right, so there's, yeah, our view app is running. So I have these listed out. So if you look at on the main readme, there's the CL requirements for the project. Um, I also have a project board with some tasks here, um, but the requirements for the project, I've kind of listed out. Oh, my cat image isn't working. Oh, well. I kind of listed out uh, the basic overview of what the app is, and then also uh, how the points and levels are going to work to gain. Basically, instead of cookies, it's purrs. I couldn't think of anything else, but it's cat themed. So you have to keep your cat happy. Um, yeah, and you start to. First, you have to click. Each time you click, you get a purr, and then eventually you'll be getting them automatically as you buy items. So in the MVP stage, um, basically all the user can do is click on a cat image to get purrs, and then we'll add a welcome screen so they can choose the cat picture and name. And also, one thing I forgot, we need to find some cat pictures. So. If anyone knows where to find good cat pictures, let me know. Um, besides my local computer, but I don't want to use any of my, my own cat images. And my phone, there's probably like a thousand cat photos. Hey Jared, thanks for subscribing again. You're officially by far my longest subscriber. How are you? All right, so I got the requirements. Let me go down to the MVP requirements. Yeah, so basically we just need the image and the image, let me realign my desktops here. Because I don't really need to look at the terminal most of the time in the front end app. Um, as long as it's running. Okay, so get rid of that. And yeah, so there's always a little bit of cleanup. Like I'm gonna get rid of the hello world here. Um, it gives me some default setup and because I chose the router and the state management, it already gave me a boilerplate router in store too. Okay, so hello world, I'm going to get rid of every reference to that. There. Okay, and now um, I'm going to show the mockup. Actually, I should, can just pull it up here, maybe. So mockups, and we're doing the MVP version. 
So this is what our app is going to look like. Some kind of cat photo counting, just basically incrementing a variable called purrs and then just any cat name. So one thing I'm actually going to do is add a design framework. So uh, let's see. I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to just add prime view because that's what I'm used to using and it doesn't matter too much to me, but I just, mostly I want the layout, the layout of it. And I know prime view is updated to work with view three, which is what I'm using. So let's see, prime view and then get started. And then this is a guide for view three and prime view three. Okay. And basically I need to install prime view and the icons. And then it's weird because it's a couple of different pieces, but I also have to install prime flex to get their grid system. So I'm just going to install these real quick. Oh, yeah. um, what's the other one? Oh yeah, prime icons, prime icons. And then I have to uh, set this up in my main, uh, in my main, what is it? Oh yeah, main.js file. So app.use prime view and I can get in. Oh yeah, I was gonna, sorry. I was gonna um, use Vite for this application, but too late, I already started uh, with the view CLI. I'll use Vite in the next application because Vite actually has a nice um, CLI with it now too. Okay, main.js. So let me go ahead and, and separate these so I can add things without chaining 100 in a row. Okay, now app.use and then app.use app.use app.mount. Okay, and then yeah, now I can paste that here and then I'll do it after everything else. So app.use and then View. I think that's all the setup that I need. And then there's some CSS that I need too. So import create react app. Yeah, you can register these globally individually, but I'm just going to pull them in as I need them component by component. Um, and then, okay, there is, here we go, the styles. So this is a little weird. I don't know why it just doesn't give you the imports, but basically I just need to paste these in somewhere. So I'll paste these in here and yeah, basically I'm going to get rid of all the extra space. There we go. And now Import. Oops. And then, okay. I updated my keyboard and then I haven't used this keyboard that much since then. All right, getting the hang of it. All right, so that one and then this import. Yeah. All right. There we go. And one more import. Import the prime icons. And then I actually think there's going to be another import maybe if I have to import the grid one separately. All right. Um, yeah, I think, yeah, that's all I'm done installing. So I did the styles. I imported the actual JavaScript library and now prime flex grid system. I'm going to, it says to use version 
0, 0.0 exactly, but maybe there's been a patch since this was updated. So I'm just going to try to use whatever the latest version is and see how that works. And we'll see, it's not really important in this application. Um, oh yeah, one more CSS library. It's already formatted. Okay, if I wanted to update the SAS variables from the defaults, then I can do that, but I'm not too worried about it, so I'm just gonna import the whole CSS library. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's always like, should I try a different version? Oh, there was one there was one library I had trouble getting working with Vue 3 the other day. What was it? Um Vue What's that? Oh, Vue Meta. I have has anyone used that before? I really like it. Um I mean it's built into not Noxt, but it gives you uh, the ability to control, yeah, the metadata on your HTML pages. So you can have a different page title dynamically from your view components and stuff like that. Um, but for some reason, I was having a hard time getting it working in a Vue 3 app. So I'm going to try again later. That's a really useful library. Um, now I forgot what I was doing. Oh yeah, that's what I was doing. Prime Flex. All right, now that I have four different uh, CSS imports and I have the prime view here and actually my relative imports or my local project imports I'm going to put those after um, my other imports and put those here oops okay that's better All right, and then I know these, yeah, I'll put the CSS at the end. All right, and then I have my app and the libraries. Okay, I think I'm ready to start actually building the page. And so I think just to get started, I'm gonna have, where's my kitty? Yeah, I'm gonna have just like a circle or a box or something that you can click on and then maybe I'll add a cat image later to make it look nicer. Okay, so I need to make this page in view. So I'll start with just the layout of the page. And home, let's see, about. So I'm gonna go ahead and rename these actually because I'm gonna have a welcome screen in a minute. Wants to make refactoring changes, okay. That was the Volar extension for Vue. Uh, welcome. So name of the component is welcome. And this one will be, I guess, main? Main page, something like that, yeah. Extension Volar, it wants to make refactoring changes, sure. Okay. Um, yeah, those, those aren't imported here, but I will get rid of all these styles. Right. So, okay, those extra styles, and then go to my router, and, oh cool, I did, oh, that's what it was asking. It renamed, I think that component renamed them for me, cool. Um, which I'm just gonna have a regular import here, so make it easier. So component, and then I wonder if this will auto import. I don't know if it does that. So let's say main, no, right, main, and then yeah, that should be the path. And this will be welcome. Welcome will be the first screen, so we'll see how that goes. Oops. Welcome. Okay. And then this one will be Oh wait. Home from welcome. Oh yeah. So let's call that welcome. Alright. 
and this one will be main, and then one more main. Okay, that file's done. And now at the root, I should see main. What's the create web history? This is a new API. Um, instead of just setting web history, I think it was a Boolean before. Uh, this is just a new API exported from uRouter to handle history mode in the web browser. Um, I haven't actually looked at the underlying code for that yet. But yeah, that's basically what it's doing. So they, yeah, they standardized the API across all these features. So it's create router, I think it's called create app. Yeah, create app. And then if you look in Vuex, they're also exporting the create store API. So yeah, um, you can still, of course you can still use like hash router and stuff, but this is just the default or maybe this is the option I picked in, cause I used, uh, a template that are already created. So maybe that's the option I picked, but it sets it up for you out of the box if you pick history mode in the CLI. Okay, so let's see how this is working. Do I have any errors? Oh, that's prime view. So let me move this over here. Okay, so probably have some kind of error. Oh, cannot be found. Oh, because I'm not running the app, that's why. Okay, then can um, serve, and that should work. Yeah, something like that. It was just setting it as a string. You could choose hash history. Was there another mode? I never used it if there was one. Hmm. Okay. All right, something's not right. View.observable. So prime view is having an issue. What issue? I don't know if I'll be able to see. Read observable in the library. Okay, I guess I can go through and see if I set up the library correctly. In main.view, I have prime view imported. Mm, I've never had an issue with prime view before. All right, so. Let me see, what error am I getting? View.observable is not a function. So it's looking for view.observable. I guess it should be exposed by my view application, but it's not for some reason, um, which is weird. So I'm registering it here. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe I'm just going to look in the prime view repo and see what's going on. Where's the GitHub link? There we go. All right, prime view and you have the sound alerts plug in on your stream, but no sounds added. Yeah, I think I'm not that good at with Streamlabs yet. I mean, I've been using it for a while. I should be better, but I think I couldn't figure out how to use it or so something. I can't remember now. It's been a while. Oh, wait. You got, let me get rid of this. Nope. You got observable. So what's... Hmm. Really don't want to dig into the prime view code base. How come this always happens during a stream? Like if there's going to be an issue, then there will be. What do you mean it's a two thirds mismatch? 
check pass package of JSON. Oh wait. Check package of JSON. I could see so view. Oh, I still have only version 3.0. And then with prime view. Oh wait, I think I have to install the alpha with prime view. Hmm. Oh, so it's looking for an old API from view version 2, maybe. Thank you. So, okay, let me go back to setup. Oops. No, it's not what I want. Prime view 3.7.1. Okay, so I do need to go to their versions because the default when you install Prime view is still in the version 2s, which is weird. Why that would be the default? They already have 3.7. Okay, so it is a version issue. Thank you. I didn't even notice that. Okay, so. That should update. And three point seven point one, let me see. Yep, three point seven point two. Okay. And let me check because Prime Flex did tell me to get a certain version and then I ignored it. Uh let's see. It said version 2.0, but it's 3.1. Let me see if it works. Maybe it'll just work. Okay. The API should all be aligned now. Let's see if it works. Okay. The server's working. Sweet. Awesome. Yeah, everything. Oh, I'm going to a link that's not there. So I'll, I'm just going to get rid of this navigation actually entirely because I don't need it right now. So app.view, get rid of the navigation, and that's it. This is an about page. All right, so from here, I am going to, I can just reuse this title and say the cat name. So the cat name, and then I can do, uh, let's see, hers. All right, and then some kind of I'm just going to make a div for right now with class of cat circle, I guess. I'm going to pretend like it's a cat, cat circle, and close that. Okay, and then I need a style tag. Actually, if I go back. Oh, I don't have it set up on this computer. That's right. So on my other computer, I have, um, why can't I think of it? Snippets for a view. Oh, well, um, I have to add those. So style and let's see. First, I'm going to get rid of this actually. So this is the main page. And then my style tag, I'm going to uh, design that cat circle, I guess. And just for fun, I guess I can scope this and I can choose the language. So I'm going to say I want to write in SAS here. And just because I prefer indented syntax, but it's the same either way. Okay. And now I'm styling cat circle, so I guess I'll give it a width of three 
100 pixels and the height. So I'm using Vo the Volar extension, but actually Viter, Viter seem to have better syntax highlighting. Maybe they're still working on it, but there's no SAS highlighting right now, I guess. Um, okay, so height would also be 300 pixels. And then what else do I want? Border uh, radius. And I think I need that at 50%. Yeah, 50%. Okay. And, oh yeah, I need a color to it. So let's put a color of, let me just pick a random color and see what comes out. So, E, F, E, 9, E. Okay, no idea what color that's going to be, but let's see. All right, so it's not showing up in the page. Let me see. Um, am I doing this correctly? So I have my template. Maybe it's not highlighting because I'm not doing it correctly, or I don't have. Yeah, this should work. Referencing the class here, and let me just try no border styling. I can add a border. Um, border, uh, let's see, two pixels solid black, just the default. Oh, there we go. Yeah, why isn't it? Oh. Because I said color, not background color. That's what I did. I was like, why isn't it showing up? Thanks. Yeah. There we go. Oh, it's a yellow color. That's fine. All right. So I have a huge cat. Also because I'm zoomed in on the browser, so it looks bigger. And now I need to center everything on the page. So, yeah. So let me, um, let's see. Let me go here and so I use prime view at work and everywhere so I'm pretty used to it but if you look at the prime view uh, grid so prime view has two ways of like laying out your page they have uh, in prime flex they have the grid um, and then they also have a flex box system so Usually the main layout I'll do in the grid and then things that I need aligned in different areas of the page I'll use Flexbox for it. But I think because there's so little going on right now, I think I can just use Flexbox for everything. So let's see. And every class with Prime View is always prepended with a P dash. So P dash, and then it's pretty much the same API as any other design framework. So uh, let's see, uh, P dash, what am I going to do here? Oh, it's already 840. It's been almost 40 minutes. All right. P dash uppy. Yep. That's correct. Let's see. Flex. Now I can't remember. Yeah. P dash, oh, display, so D and then dash flex. And then, yeah, let me, let me start there real quick. Okay, so D dash flex. And then, let's see, let's exit out of that. All right. Yeah, that didn't do anything because the default with display flex is column and start, so it's already there. But let me, yeah, I don't want to do row, column is fine. But now I want to, oh wait, I want to justify. So I think it's P, let's see, P dash um, justify center maybe. Justify 
No. Okay. Because there's align items and justify. Let me look at the syntax for this. Justify content. Oh, it's JC. And then I can do center between around evenly. Okay. So let me try that again. So JC and then center. So I think, let me look at the container of this element actually. Yeah, I kind of like Tailwind. Okay, Jared. All right. Yeah, at least these should, I think maybe I have to do align items. So I guess align items, if justify content is JC, align items should be AI center, maybe. I need to play flex, flexbox froggies again. All right, so let's see. Yeah, why is this still display block when I have PD flex? That's weird. Uh, if I do display flex, oh, then it, it piles on top of each other. Okay, and then I have to do flex column. But yeah, that's weird. Why would that still have display block? It's not, it's not seeing my styles. So let's see, my main.js, I mean, I do have prime flex that CSS imported. Um, prime flex, did I install prime flex? I believe I installed it. I'm not gonna go through my node modules, but. Oh yeah, I can just look at my package.json, what am I doing? Um, okay, so in package.json, I have prime flex. Yeah, I wonder if I did need that other, because that's weird that it would tell me to get version two, but it's not seeing any of my style classes. Yeah, but the, the whole app, so when I build the rest of the app, I'm going to need a lot more and it's just easier if I have, you know, a grid system that already works. So it did tell me to, let's see, set up version 2.0, ah, but why? Okay, let me try it. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not getting any errors about it. It's just not seeing any of those classes. So let me try version two. It's very strange. It's a whole major version behind when I'm using version three. So it seems like I should be using version three of Prime Flex too. Okay, npm run serve. Let's see. Let's see if that works any better. Oh, my server's running. Yeah. Okay. Now it's seeing the classes. So the lesson is that I should just listen to the documentation and install the version that they recommend. And I've seen that twice so far, so yeah. Okay, so I need to do this. Um, let's see, center. So I need to do column. So, okay, one more thing. This PD column, here it is. P dash flex dash column. All right. So this is it. Oh, let me do it back here. Okay, p dash flex dash column. There. 
I would have just built this in JS Fiddle. Yeah, but then I wouldn't be checking it into Git. I guess I could copy paste it over. Yay! I finally got in 40 minutes, I got KitKat to show up. And now I just need to make an on click on this yellow cat circle. And it's got to increment these purrs. So instead of a static number here, I'm going to do, let's see, purrs. And this one. There we go. And now I need a script tag. Oops. And there we go. Yeah, I really need um, snippets on this computer. Okay, so for script tag, I can just export default. And then uh, I just need data right now. So I can do data and return an object. So, and here, my variable will be purrs, and that's going to be at zero. Yep, and purrs starts at zero. Okay, and so now when I click, I just want to increment purrs, which is easy. I just need a method, methods, and let's see. I'll spend another 40 minutes just choosing the cutest kitten. That actually sounds a lot more fun than installing a view component library with CSS. All right. Does anyone have a recommendation of where to find uh, cat or kitten pictures? I guess it would have to fit in the circle. So it has to be, I don't know, maybe just a PNG of just the cat, no background. Okay, so methods, let's see. Increment purrs and no, this is a function, so that, and then I don't need to pass anything in, so I can just do that. And then I can just do mutate it, so this dot purrs um, equals, this dot purrs equals what? Um, yeah, I guess it would just be, let me do plus equals then. So plus equals this dot, no, 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 plus equals one. That's going to um, exponentially increase if I did that. Okay, plus equals one, that's what I want. Every time you click, it's just going to increment by one. And then let me add an on click here. So let me add an at click equals, um, yeah, in Comments purrs. There. That should work. That's a pretty simple application. Um, I usually go to DuckDuckGo image search and select clip art and then the license. That's a good idea. A fellow DuckDuckGo user. All right. Yeah, it annoyingly highlights sometimes, but you get the idea. And then you just get carried away clicking like you do with cat, uh, cookie clicker. Except there's a lot less going on. Okay, so this is basically it in the MVP stage here. But the other MVP requirement was to add the welcome screen with the cat pictures and name. So let's see. Um, let me go to the welcome screen. Because when I first designed this, I had some old mockups. I just went ahead and left them, I guess for history's sake. Oh, I forgot to get ignore. Oh well, I'll fix that. Anyway, uh, welcome screen. Yeah, so welcome to kitty clicker, and then choose your cat, enter cat's name, and then start, and it should take you to this screen so you can make your cat happy. Okay. So I need a couple more variables. 
So I need, and first I'm going to put these only on the welcome screen here. Let's see. If I do kind of like this, and so slash welcome, I can go to the welcome screen. There's nothing there. Let me get rid of this image, and I can actually delete it. It's in the assets folder. So it's just a view logo. I can put my kitties in there too. Okay, so this will be welcome page in case I want to cancellate styles. All right, and now I need to add, so let me add the title. Let me just add the sections. So welcome to Kitty Clicker and then the choose your cat section, enter cat's name and start. All right. JS Fiddle. Did you just make a JS Fiddle of <laughs> exactly what I'm doing? Let me take a look at this. Oh, cute. Oh, that's so cute. I love that cat picture. Where did you get it? Bonds Google. Okay, I'll find a, a good cat picture though. That's fine. Okay, so here's my blank page. Yeah, that's not all I'm doing with the app. I need that component library, don't worry. Okay, so on the welcome page, let's see, I need an H1 and I'm gonna say, oh, placekitten.com, thank you. Okay, so first let me get the welcome page done and I'm gonna need some cat images on there. I don't know, I guess I won't download them, I'll just have a URL link to them, that's easier. Uh, welcome to Kitty Clicker. There. And now, let's see. Um, let me make another section. So, this is going to be a section, and this is where I'll have H2, um, H2. Oh, wait, one second. Okay, so H2. All right, and what did that say? It says choose your cat. All right, so H2 is going to be choose your cat, and the height and width 200, 200. Oh, is the yellow circle too big? Okay, so I have that section, and then um, this one, which is, actually this will probably be some kind of a form label on that section, and then I have the button at the bottom. Um, and let me go ahead and grab that button from Prime View, so I'll search and get a button. Uh, let's see. Button. Yeah, I just want a button. That's it. It's a regular button. Um, or, yeah, outlined. Outlined looks good. Okay, import button. I can just import this into my component. And let's see. Alright, so I imported the button. And now, button, I was thinking, yeah, button outlined. This is what I want. Just a regular button. And I can do, oh yeah, I do have to register it. So as a component, so let me put button and then I can use it here. So um, yeah, let me put it there. And then, oops, let's see. Okay, so I have a regular button. And now I do need to map. Let me do the input section first. 
So I'm gonna, let's see, input and input text. All right, just a basic input, that's all I want. Now I can import text. Okay, so I need to import this component and now I have to register this one. So input text, there we go. And I need some water. Yeah, I don't need anything fancy here. So just a regular input text. And that's it. Oops. This is just a regular paste. Yeah. Um, I do. Okay. Let's see. I do need a label though. There's a floating label. Um, I have a regular label. I guess I can just use the regular label username. Where's the invalid one? Property styling tendencies. Let me look at this. So invalid here. So class P field. So I guess this groups the input and the label. So let me grab this then and go over here. All right. So I'm going to delete this. Oh no. Let me just grab the whole section then. All right, grab that. And now I can paste that. Um, and then, all right. Okay. And I don't want the small text. I guess that's for errors and stuff. Okay. Hey, Alterium, how are you? I'm working on a Vue.js application now. The Vue code isn't in the repo yet, but you can see all the project requirements and everything if you want to take a look. Um, yeah, there's a project board. There's a couple. Uh, markdown files with information about the project and all the mockups and everything. Um, okay, so I have, let's say, cat's name. That's good. And then I'm just going to call this name. Name. Type. Really? Is there a username type? I didn't realize that. All right, let me just leave that alone. Uh, maybe name help. And I don't want invalid. I'll do validation later. All right, so that's the cat's name. Let's see how this looks. Cool. So, uh, welcome to Kitty Clicker. Choose your cat. I need the cat images. And then I have cat's name here. So uh, let me go ahead and pull in the cat images, and then I'm going to worry about styling this. And first, actually, I want to v-model what's in that input field. So I need to add data here. And anyway, I'm going to end up putting this in Vuex. But let me just go ahead and add this. So data, and then let's return an object. Let's see. And this will be, yeah, I guess just name. It's an empty string. All right. Oops. And this will be the model equals name. Why is that crossed out? Input text v model. Name is deprecated. 
What? What's my variable name? Um, okay. Let me call it cat name. There must be some, just some parsing issue. Oh. Okay, there we go. Oh, uh, I think, I think that's to do with, what was that video I made before on, um, the value and at input or whatever? Maybe that's what it's talking about. But yeah, it just sees name and thinks it's deprecated when I'm actually using it as a variable down here. Anyway, cat name is fine. So I have that V modeling. Um, yeah, let me get the cats. So Jared in the stream recommended I use Place Kitten to find cat pictures. So let me check that out. Oh, 200, 200. I thought you were telling me to change the size of my circle in the app, but you're saying to choose image 200, 200. That is a very cute kitten. Oh, that's awesome. Change the height and width in the URL. I've seen Place Kitten before, but I guess I haven't used it recently. 300 and then 300. Oh, it gives you a, a random kitten each time. Oh, then you can't really pick though. Oh no, of that size. Okay, I was confused. So 200, 200. 300, 300. So is 400 bigger? Or what about 301? Oh. Okay. I could I could look at kittens the whole stream. But all right. I'll p I'll pick this kitten is just too cute. This one's too many kittens. So maybe 200 200 is good. And then let me, let me find more. Oh, that one's sweet. But I want like a good profile, like where I can see the whole kitten. Oh, there's the kitten again. This one, 300303. Okay, I'm taking that one. And I guess for right now, I'm gonna also put these in here and then I'll move them later, so. Uh, kittens. So I'll just have this as an array and then there. Okay. If you want, there's also a place cage. <laughs> we have Nicholas Cage images, but it's less cute. Yes, it is very much less cute, but that's cool. All right. Um, why would you have an API with or an image repository, I guess, with Nichols Cage. There we go. All right, so, oh yeah, I was at the point of kitten pictures. So I picked one kitten picture, I need two more. If anyone has a recommendation, let me know. I'm just kind of cycling through these. Oh, he's cute too. Okay, I'm just gonna grab some. I'm going to grab that one and then see what the next one is. Okay, I have to grab that one. And that's a perfect profile of a cat too. So uh, let me go here. And by the way, someone mentioned, do, does my keyboard sound too loud on stream? This keyboard has the cherry brown switches, so it's not really that loud, but I guess Maybe I'm a key basher and I just hit them too hard. Um, I am gonna get speed speed switches at some point. Sorry. I didn't even know my phone would ring on my computer. That's weird. There. Just turned on do not disturb. All right, 
So I have place kitten. Oh yeah, and then the next one is just the same. So I'll do this and let's replace that with five. And I think that's good. And then I can just make a loop of images in my DOM here. What do you mean very clacky, Jared? Is that too clacky? Is that clacky but good? What do you think? Okay. I'm going to make an image tag with a V4, which equals, let's say, IMG in, no, I guess URL maybe? URL in kittens? Yeah, because it's just a URL right now. So, uh, let's see. URL in kittens, and then, yeah, I just pass it into source, and, oh yeah, I do need to vbind this, so it's a dynamic value. Okay, so source, and then just URL, and I think that's all. I might actually need to set the sizing so it actually shows up on the page. We'll see what happens. Oh yeah, I need to have a key, since I'm looping through stuff here. I need to have a key, so let me, yeah, do, oops, key equals, um, let's see, key equals, I don't know, I mean, the URL is unique, I'll just use the URL, I guess, oh, that's so cute, okay, and, yeah, you can tell the sizing, it's just a few pixels different, which is fine. And then I think I'm going to leave them like this. Well, let's see. What does this look like if it's actually... Uh, do not. So that's at 100%. I mean, that looks pretty much in line with the rest of the page. That looks fine. Okay. Leave it at 150. And I just need to separate them, basically. And then... Uh, yeah, when you click on the cat image and you choose a cat name, oh, the button still says primary. So, I should say like submit or something maybe. Okay, what to do first? Um, let me create a kitten variable. So when you click on a kitten, you can select it. Okay. And yeah, let me do select kitten, make a method here. So let me do methods and uh, so, this is not, yeah, select kitten. So on this keyboard, the S key and the A keys, if I hold them down, they go to different layers. So sometimes when I press it a certain way, I accidentally go to the layer instead of actually hitting the key. Um, but yeah, once I get used to whatever keyboard layouts I have, usually I stop doing that. All right, so let me get select kitten and I'm gonna pass in the kitten when I click. So select kitten and then I'm gonna say this.kitten equals whatever kitten I pass in. All right, and so your game is done. Thanks, Jared. Uh, it's kind of a cool challenge though, challenging with the stream. Who can build the app the fastest? And it probably won't be me because I'm trying to talk out loud and getting distracted while I'm doing it. Also, Jared is much better at view than I am. So there's that. Okay, select kitten. Um, yeah, now I need to have an on click here on the images. So let me add in at click. I'll check out your game in a second. At click equals uh, select kitten. And then I need to pass in the URL. And I don't have any other metadata about the kitten or anything so 
or information. So I'll just leave it like that. And then the selected kitten will just be the URL because that's all I need. I have the name and I have the image as kitten. Or maybe I should call this like kitten image if I have cat name. Or, man, okay. Let me keep some consistency here. So I have cat name, let me change it to kitten name. All right, and kitten name. All right, and then up here, so I'm gonna change this too. Yeah, it's weird to have cat in one place and kitten in another place. Okay, so this will be kitten uh, URL, I guess. And this dot kitten URL equals kitten. Okay, that's a little bit better. Welcome to Kitty Clicker. And kitty, of course, can be cat or kitten. So I'm just choosing to use the term kitten. Also because all the images are kittens now. So play my game, you get kitties. Oh, I do get kitties. You made a completely different game than I did. Okay, so let me just see if this works. Um, let me go to the view dev tools and welcome screen. I can see in my data here. So I have empty, still empty. Let's see, nothing going on there. Let me see. Okay, welcome screen. Trying to click. Oh, it did. I just had to update. So it is working. All right. So it is working. I just had to refresh in the dev tools. Okay. So I have kitten's name populating and the selected kitten, whichever kitten I want. Um, now I need to first style this page and then I need to get this information over to uh, the other page, this page, so I can have the actual picture here and the actual name here. Okay. There we go. Okay, I will try your game. Quick break. We're going to play a chat game that Jared made to compete with mine. Oh, you get points for Kitty Clicker. Buy free click. Oh, cool. So you made in browser. This is exactly what I want to do in version one. So when I click 50 times, oh, you highlight the button. And now it increments on its own. Very cool. Yeah, you beat me by a lot. Okay. Yeah, so check out Jared's game. All right, so, but you don't have a cool welcome screen. And I also, also, yeah, I'm gonna have more screens at some point. I guess you can use router and JS fiddle. It would probably be better to do, if you're gonna use view router in an app to do it in, um, what is it, code sandbox, something like that. But there are other ways, I guess you could show and hide or whatever which is what the router is doing anyway. Okay, what am I doing? Let me style this. So let me make this page look like this. And first of all, I think I'm gonna use the grid because that way I can maybe do this as six columns in the middle and offset by three, the whole thing. And then I can align things in the middle. Maybe I'll use Flexbox for that. Um, and whatever styling I need. Okay, so let me go to Prime Flex and the grid system. By the way, if anyone joined, uh, feel free to say hi. And this is the repo that I'm working off of, which uh, that repo has all the planning and everything in, in there and all the mockups and what I'm going off of in the mockups folder. But right now I'm working on the welcome screen. So yeah, let me get the grid system, which I just need a wrapper. And basically I'll just do P grid and then columns inside. All right. 
So it's a little bit different than, I guess, a bootstrap style where you have rows and then columns. So let me see. I don't think they have rows, or I never use them if they do. All right. So P grid. Let me go over here and welcome page. Yeah, I'm going to do a P grid here. P. Oops. Uh, P grid. Let me see what I did to the page. Yeah, it's everywhere. Okay, so now I need a P grid. And basically, now inside of this, I do need another wrapper div because I'm going to do um, column or P, no, P column and then six. So I'll just do it for all screen sizes now. So P offset. Let me do offset of three because this is a 12 column system. So now I'll do this and get rid of that. Oops. Um, let's indent these and then um, I can do where I can close the div. And then, oops. Okay, so select kitten, kitten's name. Okay, that looks good. I'll have to fix the sizing of the kittens, I guess. Except maybe, no, I think six, six columns is good. Let me zoom out and see what it looks like at the actual size. That's at 100. Yeah, so I think that'll be good. Let's zoom back in. Um, choose your kitten, and then kitten's name. Yeah, I need to put some, uh, what should I do next? I kind of, I guess the text looks like it's justified there. And then, but I don't want to go through the trouble of making it a certain size, but I'll just keep everything left aligned I need to fix the input a little bit and then add some spacing in the kitties and that's pretty much all I want to do for styling I think. Nothing too complicated. Alright, so let's see. Yeah, let me add some spacing in the kitties I guess. So um, around each kitty, so around each one of these. I don't care too much about how it looks, but I'll just do P and then margin. I think if I just do M, it's margin on every side, top, bottom, left, right. So let me just do a little bit of margin. Yeah, I think that looks good. So I can click on the kitties and I can choose the kitten's name. Let me see what other styles they have for inputs here. If I go to input, input, well, I guess I would have to style it. That's fine, I can style it. So P input text is the field input style, larger input element. Okay, so I just have a regular input element and I'm going to style it. So I don't have a style peg here, so I'm going to add that. And style, there we go. And style, so I'll do that. I'll just leave these, right? I guess I should scope. Scoped and then laying equals sass just to keep it consistent. Yeah. Okay, so P input text and then I don't want to style that. I guess first of all I want a border. I'm just going to leave it black. So one pixel solid black to make it stand out more. And then width. 
I'm going to change the width to be a lot wider, so 300 pixels, and that might be enough. Yeah. So, and I highlighted it's blue. Oh well. And then I want to put some spacing there. So, I have the label, which, let me add a class to the label. So, if I add a class, and then uh, let me do P margin right, margin right, and let me put three. Let's see how that is. Yeah. And let me actually add that. There we go. Kitten's name. All right. I think for a dummy application, that's pretty good. I can add a little bit more spacing here. So I could do P margin. Let's see on the Y axis. So margin Y um, to give it some space with the other elements of the page. And I can also do three. All right. Yeah, that didn't help a lot. Let me do five. Yeah, that's better. And then one more thing, and then I'm done. So choose my kitten. I'm also just going to add class equals p-margin uh, p top of Let me just put five. So put five on the end. Okay, and then I think I'm done. Yep, I'm done. So this was the mock-up, and this is what it ended up looking like. Good, good enough um, for MVP version. Now the important thing is that the information, like I store the kitten's name, and you know which kitten I selected. When I hit submit, this should, I guess, I don't really need to save them if, if I'm automatically updating them, but it should, I guess, store, or maybe I will save these only when I hit submit. It should store them and navigate to the other page so you can start playing with them. And let me, let me change this section. Go play. All right, so I'm gonna move these out. I could set up some other system or events or something, but I'm gonna move them out. Since I have a store here, I'm going to actually move my information into this store. So I'm going to take my uh, kitten name. Well, actually, yeah. I will, and then I'll map them back to the component. So get rid of all of that stuff. And now I just broke my application. But uh, let me go here and in state, I'm gonna paste. All right, so I have kitten name, kitten URL, kittens. Now I can map all this state to the component and then make mutations to update the fields, which I guess I could make one mutation for both. Update kitten info, and this will pass in. Well, first I get state because it's a mutation, and then I get I'm gonna pass in just an object. So let me pass in an object and the object that I pass in will have, let's see, it will have the, the field type, or no, let me call it field. So either kitten name or kitten URL, whatever field I want to update, and then the value. All right, and then I'm going to do this, no, state, because I have the state I'm getting in here. So state, and then uh, looking at the field, whatever field I want to update on state, and then that field will now equal the new value, and that's just a really simple mutation. Okay, so let me go back here, 
And now I am going to import from UX. So I think this will be auto imports. Let me see. So state to map state, I need to use computing so it can keep watching state for updates. So I'm going to do map state. Yeah, I did import. Okay. Map state. And then this is a function and it's not namespaced. So I'm just going to go ahead and pass in uh, my array here. So I'll do is putting data from API call in the store state a good idea to serve the whole app. It depends how your app is set up, but generally, let's see. Yeah, generally I put all data from all API calls in the store. Um, and then depending on how much data I have in the application, sometimes, or I almost always have the store separated into different modules. And then when I don't need uh, one particular part of state, like if a user navigated to a different part of the website, I clean out that module. So I'm not storing too much stuff in state at any one time. But yeah, that's the pattern that I use. Uh, anything asynchronous, I put in an action, which all, you know, all the API calls are asynchronous. So I put those in an action to get the data back and then it, you know, calls a mutation to update the state. And then I can subscribe to it in whatever component I want. Okay, so map state. I could put this in an object, but I only have three things on state. So I'm gonna update all three, or map all three variables to see them in my component. Yeah, in actions. So I would have them as functions inside actions here. But right now I don't need, I'm not making an API call, nothing's asynchronous. So I can just directly use the synchronous update on state. Um, and probably, so I've been kind of following it in future versions of UX. These are supposed to get merged into one. So you can use actions and mutations in the same, like there's not gonna be a difference. It's all gonna be called actions, I guess. And you can mutate from actions, but I'm not sure where they're at with that. Okay. Also, mutations can't be asynchronous. Only, only actions can right now. Um, okay. What was I doing? Oh yeah. Kitten, kitten name. And then, uh, kitten URL. And then, uh, how did I call that? Kittens. Yeah, kittens. Okay. And those are this. That, so I get, I'm get. i getting all this state in my component. Um, but now, of course, I can't V model to the input text. So I'll have to do my updating differently. But let me see if this works. Yeah, it works, but it's not going to update, obviously because it's not vmodeling to the right place. And it's probably giving me an error about that. Yeah, these are read only because I'm mapping state from Vuex, but I have no way of updating that state from the component. So I also have to map the mutation that I made, update kitten info to update these fields. So let me go ahead and that will be inside methods because that's a function. So I need to map mutations and that auto imported for me and this will be oops inside of uh, an array and then let's see now I can't remember what I called it already update kitten info update kitten info okay I'll just put my uh, comma dangle Okay, so I have update kitten info. So I want to call this directly, like anytime someone presses a key, for example, on this input field, then I want to call update kitten info. Actually, the easier one first is to call it from select kitten, because I already have this here. So instead of that, 
I'm gonna do this dot update kitten info. And then basically this selects the image. So I'm expecting an object to be passed in because view passes in the state as the first parameter and then the object is the second one. So, which will be whatever I pass in. So I'm gonna pass in that object here. Oops, what am I doing? Okay, and this will be, let's see, I need the field type, which field to update, which will be uh, kitten URL. And, oh yeah, I need to pass in the name because it's in an object, so. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I know what I can do. So let me undo that. And I'm just going to call this kitten URL. Um, and then all I have to do is rename the variable that's getting passed in. So that will be the name and the value. Okay. So I have kitten URL. Oh, wait, I need to pass in the field name. So the field will be also kitten URL. That's what's confusing me, I think. Okay, and then the value will be, oh no, I guess I can't do that. So what I have to do, because I'm expecting, you know, I'm not only passing in kitten URL, I'm not only updating kitten URL, it could be kitten name. So I need one field to be called the value. So let me just call this value. There, so I have field and value, and this should work. This should update the kitten URL and map it. So let me try that out real quick in here. Let me see. Let me click on a kitten, a little welcome component. Yeah, and that updated. Let me click on a different kitten. And that updated to 305. Okay, so that does work. So I successfully mapped this, and this is updating it in the Vuex store. And my store was broken here earlier, but yeah, my root store. So I can see it in my store, which is global, so I can, I'll can i be able to use that in any component now. Um, now I just have to get the name working, which to do that, I can't just use the regular V model. I have to separate that, so I think what I need to do is the value of the field. I mean, so in prime view, if I go to input, I can see, oh, I'm already on input. So I can see any properties. So I have model value, which is the value of the component. So I think I need to call that prop model value. And that should be the value of the component. Um, and let me just see if that works. So that's just a static value. And then I'll have to, so. Okay, let me see if that works. Yeah, so that is the value of the component. But it will never update in here because I don't have an update set up. Okay. So now I need to do model value. So I believe I have to do at input, something like that. Um, so at input, so when someone, because um, I have to pass in, so it's not the same as a key press event. Like if I was just using a regular HTML5 input field, I would do a key press but since I'm passing this into a custom component made by this library, I think what it's looking for is an input event, um, which is kind of the standard view syntax for this child com for any child component. Um, so I think input, and then uh, I'd need a function, and actually I get the event. So if I make a function. E, so I think I can do, let me call update kitten info, update kitten info, and then 
I can do E dot. Oh no, I need to still do the same object because it's still expecting an object. So I'm going to do the object and field will be kitten kitten name and then value will be e dot oops e dot target dot value and then oops um, what do I need? Oh yeah, I need to close the that. I think that's it. Oh yeah, and close the, because I called the function. So, okay, that should work. So, every time there's an input event, I should call that function. And let me see if that works. Let me, yay, it does work. It's updating my store with kitten name. See, it's not too bad, Jared. Like an hour and a half and two screens. So that's pretty much it. And then go play. All I'm going to do here, it's not actually saving anything because my values are automatically saving in the store. So go play will just take you to, or I guess I'm going to check if these values exist. Yeah, I think that's what I need to do. So let me do some error handling real quick. And if the values exist, then GoPlay will just navigate you to the game screen. All right. So uh, let's see. So GoPlay, I'm going to do an at click then. Store my local points in local storage. Yeah, I'm, I'm getting there soon, coming soon. OK, at click will be GoPlay. All right, and then it will be another method. So let me do go play, and then that. All right, so go play will, first I'm just gonna do a simple check. So you have to have a kitten name and kitten URL to play. So I'll do this dot, if this dot, kitten URL and this dot, uh, this dot kitten name. Sometimes I look over here because I'm looking for where I put my keys or which keys I programmed as which keys on my keyboard. Um, yeah. So, okay, so I'm checking basically if those exist I guess I should do it the other way. If they don't exist, then I'm going to do something in return. So this would be or then. Yeah. Or. Nope. Those aren't my pipe symbols. Uh, let's see. Where are my pipe symbols? There we go. All right. Let's see. Are you going to play by a game, Jared? So if they don't exist, then I'm going to use a toaster. And I know Prime View, just real quick, has some kind of a toaster. So I can let users know. Um, I guess I should set the inputs to invalid, actually. Mm, what should I do? Uh, let me... But I need to send them some kind of message. Let me just look for a toast real quick. Yeah. I'll just do something like that. Okay. That's easy. So the toast service, basically I need to register this in my main JS file. So I'm going to import toast service and put it here. So Let's see. Put it here. Toast service and then app dot use toast service. Um, app use 
these toasters. Okay. So uh, that works. And now in components, I guess I'll just, well, okay, that's if I want to do it in component by component. But it's also been injected into my this context. So I can do this.toast.add. So I think I'm going to do this actually, just like that. And just copy it. We don't have to import it. Um, and I think it should work just like it is right now. Index.js. Uh, let's see. So I want it here. And let me change this to five seconds, maybe. And so details will be uh, select a cat image and name the cat these. And this will be invalid. And then the severity will be error. Okay, and then if I want to circle the fields in reds later, I can. Okay, so I'm gonna actually return here because if there's an error, I don't wanna go further with the function. So now I have that, I guess, guard set up. So what I'm going to do is, um, what am I going to do? Oh yeah, I have to route them to the other page because I don't need to save anything. Anything's already saved. Um, and because I have my uh, router set up, I'm using it as middleware here. So I have my router that injects the router into the this context, so I have it available in every component. So I can do this dot router dot, and then basically, you know, the regular browser writing functions, routing functions. So like push, replace. I think I have all of those normal ones. Okay, so I have this dot router, and I guess I can do dot. Yeah, let me just do dot push. Okay, dot push and push them to that page. So let's see if this works. So first let me say go play. Yeah, it's connected to the button, so let me see. And empty strings should be falsy. So, you know, these will be come as falsy values. So they sh um, so until something's actually stored and there's some characters, shouldn't let me go on. Let's see. All right. Uh, let me click on one. Okay, so now I have my place kitten, but I don't have a name. So let me try to go play. And nothing happens. Where's my console? All right, let me try again. Just to see. Okay, so I have my place kitten. Um, oh, I know what I'm missing. Uh, so it's stopping in the in the function here, it's returning, but toast, it doesn't know where to show up on the page. So I do need to have a toaster somewhere in my app. Uh, the HTML for it, I guess. Where is it? Yeah, here. I need to put this somewhere. And I think I can just put it in any component. So let me say top right. Where's top right? So let me grab this toaster and I'll put it in my app.view and I'll put it here. Top right. Let's see if that works. Um, okay, so let me refresh. I, th I think I am yeah, one more thing I have to do to get that working is I need to tell it which toaster I'm talking about. So I do, so if I go here, top left, top right, okay. 
I have group here, so I guess that's a group. Oh, so you can programmatically remove poster. I think closable group style class detail summary. Oh, this is showing. Do I need it? Can be injected with the use toast function. I feel like I don't do that in my other apps though. That I need to inject it in the setup function. Use toast. Do I need to do that? Let me see. I'll have to look at my other app and see what I'm doing. Um, yeah, this is a group, so I can make a group called top left if I wanted different groups. Let me see. They're not injecting it here. This dot toast. Oh, this dot toast. Oh, okay, that's if you want to remove all groups. All right, so I could try to set the group here and then on the toaster, I think there should be a group. Um, click. Yeah, group here. Okay, let me try that real quick. Otherwise, I'll, I'll put it in the setup function just to get it working. Okay, so very summary, detail, life, I'll put group at the end. Oh, there we go. And that's just to keep my naming consistent. So it's top right. Oh, right. There we go. Okay. And now in my actual toaster, I need to define a group prop that equals top right. Let's see what happens. Yeah, I'm just going to create a setup function. Um, let's see, components, yeah, here, I'll put it in setup, and then, let's see, Okay, so set up and what did I do? Oh, you have to import it. Feels like I'll figure this out after the stream. All right, documentation, toast service are dynamically created using toast service that needs to be installed globally. Yeah, I'm already doing that. Ideal location of a toast is the main application so it can be used by any component in the application. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. Can be injected with the toast. Is that what I'm doing? Can I do this? So I don't use the composition API very much. So can I do this in my, um, so if I put a setup function in my app component, it should, I should have access to anything in the, ch in the children, right? Is that how it works? Let me see. Because the app component is always there anyway. So import use toast. And then this will be export uh, oops, default. And then setup. And that would be const toast. Oh, this is just so I can do use toast. So I guess I could have this anywhere in my app. Um, but how is it getting injected then? Toast is available. Yeah. On the options API, toast should be available everywhere. What am I doing? This is extra. I don't need that. Okay. Yeah, toast should be available anywhere in my application on the toast property. So 
I just got confused with setup because I think it was V validate I just started using and I do that inside my setup function. I mean, I didn't just start using it, but I use it in pretty much every application. Uh, okay. Why isn't this on the, this context? It should be injected. Idea location. Oh, oh my God. I know what I'm doing. Okay. This is what I'm doing. And I thought there, were, there should be a warning about this. Because I feel like I do this sometimes. Yeah, failed to resolve component toast. That's what I'm doing. Um, all right, so I need this one. And then import toast. And now I can do maybe export default again. And components, oops. And uh, components, and this will be toast there. I didn't have it registered in the component, that's why. All right, now I should see it. Okay, that was all I had to do. All right, and now if I click on a kitten, enter some name, I can hit go play and it works. Of course, now I need this to, be hooked up. Let's see. It's almost 10. I have a little bit more time. Thanks, S Wine. All right. Uh, let's see. Yeah. So, so let me map it to this component. Let's see. Welcome. Did that. I did that. Um, I did this. Purs and coming purs. Yeah, so this will be. Oops. Kitten name, which I'm going to get in a second. Oh, yeah, purs. Well, I don't know if I need purs anywhere else right now, so. Oh, but if I want to. So I could either put purs in view X as well, because I'm going to persist the view X data to local storage. Or what I could do is, one second, I just missed it. <laughs> All right. Uh, or what I could do is make my own like local storage serializer from the component. I'm not sure what I'm going to do, but first, I need to map my Vuex data so I actually get the kitten name here. And then I'm going to get the kitten image too. So let's um, use computed. I don't know why it isn't trying to autocomplete. Like I want this other thing when I mean view, it should autocomplete with computed. Anyway, um, let's see, computed. And then, yeah, almost two hours. I feel like I could go all day if only I didn't have to work. Hey, Data Dev, how are you, by the way? All right, so computed. Um, oh, yeah, I need to map state. So map state. Why would it do that? Why would it do this? It imports on top of my script tag. That is not normal. Okay. Anyway, map states function, and I don't have any namespacing again, so I'm gonna do this and yeah, get rid of that. So on my state, I need to and actually let me pull up welcome because I can just steal this. And then go back and do that. And that's exactly what I want. Um, I guess I don't need all the kittens, so let me let me do that. Okay. Um, that makes me think of a new idea. So if someone tries to go to this page and they haven't selected a kitten yet or a name, 
then um, I should automate. I should have a router guard and send them back to the welcome screen. But uh, let me do that later. Okay. I think for an MVP, this is turning out pretty well. So let me look at my store um, update kitten info. I don't need to do that. Yeah, I just need the kitten name and URL. Um, and this, I'm going to have to turn this into an image. So let me uh, put an image tag here. And I'm going to do source equals, let's say, kitten URL. And Oh yeah, I'm gonna do class, and this will, I'll use the same class. And I might have to update some of the styles. But that's basically it. Yay! And the clicking's not working though. Okay. Oh yeah, because I got rid of the on click when I changed that, obviously. All right, so let me do an at click here. And I'll probably push code after this. So at click, and I just need to do increment hers. There we go. Why is it? Oh, because when I refresh, it's not persisting. Okay, so I have to fix one more thing. And yeah, since I'm here, you know, and it broke my app, I might as well put a fix for it too. So let me go into my router real quick. And router, I don't know the exact syntax, I'll have to look it up, but it's something like, oh wait, I need to do it after this. So I'll have to do router dot before each and then Navigation guard, this, oh wait, yeah, before each, and then I pass in a function, and I guess it takes two, and then from, and then next, yeah, because I have to call next if I need to move on, so, um, or even if I don't, I think I call next if false or something, let me see, okay. So make that an arrow function. And basically, if I'm trying to get into the app, um, let's see. Oh, I need access to my store in here. So I think I can import my store. Let me see. But basically, I want to check my two no yeah i want to check two so if i'm trying to go to a route that i'm not supposed to go to which is forward slash then i want to actually i, I think i can look for the component name because that's on the router too um yeah it's in my router anyway i don't know if i need it here too but i'll just put the name here which will be name okay so uh, let me just put comments. So check the destination route if user is trying to enter main app, they should have a kitten name and URL set on state. If they don't, add them to the welcome screen. Okay, that's basically what I want to do right now. So let me actually look at the view router guard docs navigation guards okay this is what I'm doing yeah before each and then to yeah two dot name that's what I'm looking for and I called 
uh, my route is, oh, it's right here, yeah. Name is main. So if they're trying to get to main, so let me check if two dot name equals main. And now I need to check state. And I'm gonna try to import state. I'm pretty sure I can. So if I import, um, let's say import store from store, and that should just import my index file since everything is in, you know, this index file here. And then I should be able to do store dot state dot kitten name and URL like that. Okay. So if two dot name equals main, and then I need to check, and this will probably be an array of URLs eventually. So I'll leave that in its own if statement maybe. Um, and then, I don't know, I could do, yeah, let me, let me just try this. So uh, first, let me see if this is working. So let me just do a console.log of two dot. Alright. And now, yeah, it does work. Okay. So let me do if dot state oh here I need to do actually it'll be easier I'm just gonna put these in the same if block and do an and so and uh, store dot state dot kitten name actually I want to do not so if there's no kitten name, and I think I can wrap this in here. Wait, this is going to come together in a second. So pipes, and then not. So if they haven't set a kitten name or kitten URL, and close that. Um, then. I want to pass them to a route. So I think I can pass in an object here for next. Yeah, next name login. So that's what I want to do. So next, and then pass in an object in the name of the route, which I want them to go to the welcome screen here. So, okay. So let me do welcome. All right. And then, yeah, otherwise I need them to be able to get to whatever route they want if they've already set these variables. So let me check and see if this works. Let me go here and all right. So you can see I don't have these variables set now, so I shouldn't be able to access this route. Yeah, it reroutes me to welcome. Awesome. So I went ahead and fixed that just because I happened to run into it at the time. It was kind of an extra thing. Um, what was the other thing I was working on? You know, now I don't... Oh yeah, persisting state. That's the other thing. So there's a couple libraries for this. Real quick, I'm just gonna do Vuex. I think it's the persisted, Vuex persisted one. Is that the one I used last time? I can't remember now. There's persisted state. Um, and then there's uh, Vuex persist. That's it. So this is Vuex persist. 
I think it might have been persisted state was the one I was using last published 14 days ago yeah I think this was it UX persisted state okay oh yeah let me install this real quick get rid of my server all right There we go. Okay, npm run serve. Okay, this is probably the last thing I can do on this stream. But I did get through the MVP part of the app, so I'm happy about that. And then persisted state. So I import this directly into my store here. Oops. Um. Oh, oops. There we go. All right. So I accidentally made that full screen. So view X persisted state. Um, and then I have to do it under modules. So, oh, plugins. That was it. Yeah, plugins. Okay, so I'm gonna do this create persisted state, and it should work now. So let me go into my app and like that. All right, so now if I go here, select a cat image. Okay, so I selected a cat image. I have my cat image. Now if I refresh, Well, is my state not persisting? Let's see. Oh, I know what's happening. Oh, I am running my server. I thought maybe I wasn't running my server. Okay, let me look in not my source uh, application here. So I am, it is persisting the state here. Title, text, but it's not, it doesn't seem to be pulling back from the state. So maybe I haven't set it up right. Let me see. Oh, this is from another application. Let me get rid of this. Okay. Now it should be working. Let me see. Oh. And yep, now I refresh and it works just fine. All right. Cool. Yeah, for some reason it's not showing here, but it is showing on the page, so it is mapping. One thing with the view three dev tools, I've noticed that the view X here doesn't always uh, work properly for some reason. But if I go in the timeline view, which is pretty cool, I don't think they had this in the view two dev tools, um, or not like this anyway, because I don't remember using it, but. Yeah, I can choose. I guess I don't really have mutations and stuff because I do the, the only one on the welcome screen. But you can like see view X from here too and see what the state is through your mutations and actions also. Anyway, um, I think that's it. So this works as intended. Yeah. And I don't have any cool items in anything, but I pretty much did the welcome screen and I did the MVP version. And that's, yeah, that's it. Let's see. And now next, I guess next time I'll have to do the store and take care of the store. And that's going to introduce a little bit of complexity because I also need a timer going. Um, over time why do i need a timer oh because things happen at certain intervals so there's a store events different things going on so um oh that's right and then also when you buy items from the store 
uh, the purrs start to increment. Like you can buy items that will increment the purrs automatically. You have to play cookie clicker and see how it works. But instead of having to click each time, your items start to um, increment purrs for you. Yeah, so next time I'll do the timer and everything. But yeah, this was a little over two hours already. And I have to get to work. So hopefully next week I'll be able to do another one of these streams. But yeah, uh, thank you for joining the stream. Who's ever still here. And I hope you have a good day. And oh yeah, can't forget to push my code. If you want to see it, then I'm just going to add everything. Figure it out later. Then I'm going <laughs> to... Code from blah. I'm just gonna call it first live stream get push the main okay and if you want to see that in the github repo then the repo is available on my github at yeah at kitty clicker so have a great day everybody take care yeah bye S Y Hi everyone, how are you? So last time I built, well, I started with the MVP requirements and then, oh yeah, here are the MVP requirements. And then today I'm gonna do version one requirements and then version two, I don't know, that might come sometime in the future, we'll see. Um, yeah, so let me go ahead and pull the app up. I'm already, Let's see, here's my terminal. I'm already running the app. Okay, let me, since the app is running, I'm gonna go ahead and pull it up. Localhost 8080. And here's Kitty Clicker. And we actually made two screens last time, so let me pull up the console. I think I have to clear the state. Actually, no, it's already cleared here. Or maybe it's just not showing up at all. Because if I go into, let's see, not sources, uh, application, yeah. What am I doing? Okay, if I go into application here, I can see in my local storage, yeah, I still have the kitty name um, pulled. So this is where it's pulling from first. Hey, Karishama, how are you? Coding garden fan? No, that's not. This is not my cat. Um, this is from that place kitten website. Let me see if I can get it here. Where, based off of the URL, it shows you a different kitten image. Yes. I wish this was my kitten, though. Um, I do foster cats, so, you know, sometimes I have various cats. That's where you see if you. I don't know if you follow me on Instagram or somewhere else, then there are different cats there, but they're not all my cats. They're just because sometimes I take on a foster cat and uh, look over them, you know, if they have surgery or they need a place to stay for a little while. Or my favorite is kittens who need to be bottle fed. Um, anyway, yeah. So, hey Richard, me, how are you? Uh, let me go ahead and just clear this, clear local storage. And now if I refresh, yeah, it takes me back to this page. So, I'm not sure why I have two of the same kitten here. That must have been a mistake. Um, anyway, I can choose which kitten I want, and then I can name my kitten, and then I can go play. So, I'm going to choose this one down here this time. And I should have a selection. This is selected in state, I think, because I clicked on it. But um, yeah, there's no indicator, like an outline or something. Anyway, I'm gonna call this Bosco. Go play. And now I can get purrs for Bosco. Um, Bosco was a cat, I think it was my first cat I ever had that we adopted from, I think it was a Russian family. So I'm pretty sure the name's Russian, but I'm not sure. Um, exactly what it means. Okay, so 
uh, yeah, so the project board for this app, I also updated this. And I created basically these four tasks. The fifth one, dev setup, is kind of like, you know, I could add git hooks and stuff like that. Um, actually, I added a UI component library because I'm using Prime View. So I did most of that, but I'm not too worried about that for right now. So the first thing, and all of these tasks are based off of the requirements, the version one requirements, getting all four of these items done. So let me put this over here. So the first task is to create a variable to track the user's level. Um, because to buy items, I'm gonna need to know their level, even though I'm only kind of creating a first level, which is level zero for right now, um, or the level that someone starts at. So uh, create level variable to track user level. All right. So in my code, let's see, where do I want this? I have the welcome screen, I have the main screen, so it's gonna have to be um, somewhere on the main screen. If I'm putting pers here, I could just uh, duplicate this and say level and I can create a level variable. Um, oh wait, not there. So here I can do level and I'll start that at zero. There. Okay, so now I have pers, I have level, and I think, oh yeah, I'm not putting any spacing here. There's a lot of spacing for some reason, but yeah, I'll leave this alone for right now. So I'm just going, so the level variable, I'm going to have to upgrade based off of the total pers. So there's another variable I need to make for pers, if this is all making sense. I think if you read the requirements and the readme, this whole project will make sense. Um, or if you play Kitty Click, or not Kitty Clicker, the actual game that this is based off of, Cookie Clicker. Okay, so, I mean, this was a really simple task, just create a level variable. Uh, okay, I guess I'll just drag that to done. Okay, I need a timer because when you start automatically gen generating pers based off of items that you buy, it does so many pers per second. So I need to um, create a timer to be able to calculate the pers per second. And I also want to just keep the timer in general to know how many seconds since I started playing the game. So let me go ahead and do that. And let's see, I'm going to put it in my main.view component. And if I need to break it out later, I will. Um, let's see, pers level. Yeah, I'll just go ahead and put, I guess I'll put time here. All right. Time and... I don't know, should I call it time or seconds? Or maybe I'll call it seconds. And start that at zero. And then I'm gonna have to create a timer here. So, and I'm gonna create that in mounted so it starts timing from when it's mounted. Of course, eventually I'll actually want to put this on the Vuex store so it persists because otherwise the timer is going to um, reset every time. So I wonder, yeah, maybe I'm going to have to create new methods then. So I have map state here and I don't think, so in my store, yeah, I don't have any actions. So I'm going to have to create actions here, I think. One, two, create timer and then this next one to um, I guess clear timer and that will clear the timer on the store 
So when that component unmounts or, I don't know, something, um, we can clear the timer so it stops counting. Um, okay. So, there. Oops. There, clear timer. Create timer. So, um, I do need something on state here. So that'll be, I guess just timer. This will be timer. And you can just say it's none or no right now. And, oops. Let's see. So I'm going to do, I guess in my mutation, I'm going to have to set it. So maybe I don't even need an action. I'll just keep it in an action. So I think in my mutation, it will be set timer. I just need one mutation. Set timer. And then if I want to update the timer, or clear the timer, I can just use that one mutation for both, I think. Okay, so to create a timer, first I need to, so let me do const timer equals, just create it locally, and this will be, let's see, set timeout. Um, let me think, no. That would be if I was, yeah, let me do set interval, interval, okay, and set interval will be, oh, I need a function in there, let me go ahead and uh, pass in an arrow function, um, and then Okay, so I'm setting an interval. Sorry. Um, and then in this interval, see, I might have to do this inside of a mutation. I don't know. How would I do this? Actually, what I think I should do is... Hmm. I think... I, I guess maybe I need to step back. So if I create a timer in view X, the timer, I'm gonna have to set the timer as state and the timer should also update state every second. So I should set timer and I should also set time from here. So I would also have a variable seconds here. Does that make sense? Hey Dark Slayer, how are you? Um, so basically, I, I would need two mutations. I would need set seconds, and that would be state payload. And then, okay, and that's set seconds. And so from in here, I need to call set seconds and then from out here I need to call set timer so there's a reference to the timer so that I can clear it later on. So um, well in order to make that work I need to let's see have um, what am I doing? I don't know if I have sleepy fingers or what's going on right now. Okay, so I need to pull in commit so I can call the mutation. Okay, so let me start with set interval, which will call the mutation every one second. I've never tried a set interval inside of an action actually, but yeah, I don't see why it wouldn't work. Let's see. Um, okay, so I can commit from here and I want to commit uh, set seconds set seconds and then I think so I can pull in state here 
So what I can do is state dot seconds plus one plus one. Okay. And then all right, so if I do set seconds, yeah, then here all I have to do is mutate my state. So it'll be state dot seconds equals um, yeah, payload, because the payload is just the number of seconds that I'm passing in, basically. So, maybe I'll rename this one to, uh, seconds. Oops. Hitting enter instead of space. Alright. Um, let's see, set seconds, and then might as well go ahead and do, uh, Timer. So set timer and it will be this dot timer equals payload. Do I look angry? Hey homeless. Oh, I'm not angry. I'm a little tired, but I'm not really angry. I've been working on some things like coding. I feel like I've been coding almost all day long for the last, I don't know, maybe three weeks. It's just constant. Well, maybe that's why my face looks different, but yeah, I don't feel upset or angry or anything. Um, let's see, I lost my train of thought. Okay, so this dot, oh, there is no this. I need to do state. I mean, there is this but yeah I need to do state because then I have yeah I can set the timer or I can set the timer um, well I'd have to call clear timer and then set the timer as null may maybe I don't know how I'm gonna do that but we'll see okay for right now I'm just gonna worry about creating the timer so I'm going to um, Oh yeah, to create the timer, I have to pass the reference to the timer. So I'm gonna do set timer. I really don't like this, these pop-ups. Um, I got rid of them in my VS Code on my old computer. So I have to remember what option to do with that. So set timer, because they do get in the way a lot. Um, and then because I use Vim, I if I hit escape, then I lose my cursor, but it, it clears that pop-up, but I also lose my cursor, so I have to fix that. Okay, so set timer, and I'm gonna pass in the timer. And that should go here. It should set the timer on my global store so I have access to it in my components. And now I can map timer and seconds as well as create timer to my component. Let's see if that works. Um, so let's do map actions and this will be, I don't have anything namespaced, so I can just do create timer. Oh no, I still have to pass in um, in array. Yeah. Oops. So, oh yeah. Okay, and then that. Let's see. And then map state. So I just need to add these to state. So I need to add timer. I don't actually know if I need the timer here, but I just put it there just in case. I can get rid of seconds there now. Um, and of course, there is no time variable, so. That will be seconds. Okay, so the only thing left is this create timer has to be called somewhere to actually create the timer. So I need to call that in a lifecycle hook. I think when I mount this component, um, I can call that too. So let me see. Mounted, I'll do this dot create timer and I don't need to pass anything. Let's see. Oh, 
Oh, <laughs> I know what I did. So it's counting up very, very quickly in milliseconds because I didn't say, um, I didn't pass in a second value to set interval to denote that I want it to run every second. Oops. Wait, hold this. Uh, you write a lot of code with Vue.js to do this kind of thing with Angular is less and becomes complex even with your small app. Angular solves this problem very well. Um, yeah, I, I used Angular and then I used React and then I went back to Angular and then React and then Vue and I've kind of switched off. Um, I don't know. I think Vue is like a happy medium between React and Angular that I really like. And yeah, there are a lot of things that you have to do more manually in Vue versus Angular. Um, and you know, like when you get into, or you know, on my other computer, I have some things that help me go faster, like snippets, and I have a lot of boilerplate templates and stuff like that. So yeah, it's not quite as robust as Angular, but it also gives me a lot of flexibility and I just really like how um, view is set up and everything. Okay, so it is counting now. I do want to re reset this timer though. Let's see. Uh, let me go ahead and clear local storage. Did that work? Did I do it correctly? I thought I cleared it. I want this clear. Delete. That's very strange. Oh, it must be something to do with the timer. That's funny. Um, yeah, because the timer is updating it, I think, before it has time to clear. So let me just. Um, where's my component? Let me just comment that out real quick and then Okay Yeah, that was weird Okay, so now I'd have to choose my kitten again But let me comment this back in All right, so go play Okay, now my timer's working correctly. All right, so yeah. That's the first time I've put a timer in Vuex, seems to work fine. And yeah, I don't know why it wouldn't work. And now for the clear timer, I think on unmount, um, is it still called destroy in view three? Is it destroy or Unmounted, let's see what it is. Um, destroy, and I'll do this, this dot clear timer. And then in map actions, I can do clear timer. Let me make sure it is actually a clear timer. Yeah, except I don't have it set yet. So let me do clear timer. And I guess really the only thing in clear timer is that it's going to call that mutation set timer. Uh, no, actually, it needs to access the timer that's saved on state. Yeah, I'm in the US. Where are you from? Um, let's see. Clear timer. So if I access here. Wait, it shouldn't do. Oh, it's doing this because I don't have anything imported here. So let me do commit and state. And then I can do, I could access state. Let me think. How should I do this? So state that timer 
and then what I would want to call clear interval. No, no, no. Clear interval is its own thing, so I have to pass the timer in. So clear interval. And then, oh, you're from the Netherlands? Cool. I've never actually been there. Um, I've been kind of all around that area. Yeah, clear interval timer. So, and then I'd have to pass in state.timer. And then, I guess after that, I still want to set timer because even though the timer is clear, that should. Does that remove the reference to it? Um, let me just try that real quick, see what happens. So if I do clear timer, clear timer will clear the interval. And, and then it would start a new timer. Okay. So, Commit is defined but never used. Okay, well. Yeah. Okay, I think it is clearing the interval, but there's no way of knowing. Let me go to here, destroy. Let me first make sure this is the name of the lifecycle hook that I'm looking for. Uh, Vue.js, I'm going to do a view 3 destroy lifecycle. Okay, so I should do that. Okay, so for mounted, for FD, FD, activated, deactivated. Oh yeah, it is unmounted. Okay, so this will actually be unmounted. There we go. Okay, I think this is working because otherwise when it mounts and unmounts it would have a whole bunch of timers all updating state. Out in the wild maybe? Let's see. Because then it would just be overwriting the reference to the timer. Um, but I think I actually am clearing it here, so that's good. And then, yeah, and if the timer's cleared, and then I, when I create a new timer, it just overwrites it. Um, clear timer though, I guess I should set seconds to zero if I really am clearing the timer. So, well, let me leave it like that for now because I don't want the seconds to necessarily reset every time I refresh. So I could do set seconds. Maybe I should have a reset button here and I could reset the time just for, um, I guess just for development, I could do that. So let me see. This will be, wait, is there a, let me try to find if there's another button in the app. I'm just going to steal a button since it's already styled and stuff. Okay, so take that and then go here and, Okay, that's a button, and then I do need to import it, so i go here, and then import button, and then I need to register it, so I'll just borrow this whole component thing. Let's see. Alright. By the way, Homeless, if you're still here, um, I haven't used, I don't think I've used Angular since, I don't even know how many versions there are, but maybe like version, it was after version 2 came out, I did try it again, so maybe like version 4, but I mostly used Angular JS, like Angular the first one, before they did the huge breaking change. 
So, yeah. So I guess that said, like, how is Angular going? Is it is the project going well? I haven't checked in on it in a long time. Um, what cool features are in Angular? I know they were they kept rolling out major versions, so I think on their trajectory, I would expect them to be like. I don't know, Angular 10 or 15 or something by now. Okay, so button... Oh, I don't want to go play here. Let's do reset timer. And then I'll have a reset here. Reset timer. And then all I need to do is... Hey, remote, how are you doing? I'm working on a kitty clicker. So at this repo, you can see I have a readme requirements markdown file, and then I also have a project board with all the tasks on it that I'm going through. If you want to check it out, I did it last stream and this stream. So came out with the MVP last stream, and now I'm doing version one for the last 40 minutes. All right, so I just implemented the timer and, oh yeah, I'm doing a reset button right now to reset the timer. So reset timer, all right, let's see. So we, no, 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 I need to call mutation. So I have, let's see, in my mutations to reset the timer, which I guess I should call it timer is confusing because this is the reference to the actual timer, the set interval, and then uh, set seconds is actually the seconds, which is what I want to reset there. So I'm going to call this reset seconds actually. All right, let me undo that um, so I can get both instances. All right. Okay, so reset seconds, and this will call a mutation. So let me map the mutation first. Map mutations, and I'm gonna do this. Let's see. Uh, set seconds. So I'm gonna map the set seconds mutation and then all I have to do here is is this too small by the way I can zoom in that's probably better on the screen all right so uh, reset seconds and then all I have to do is call that mutation so seconds and then pass in my payload so I'll pass in zero because I want it to go back to zero all right let's see if that works get rid of this all right something is wrong let's see console nothing on the console let's see reset timer should call reset seconds reset second oh i'm doing this dot set seconds um which i need to call this because set seconds is a function so, there's a problem when the app calls. Um, so, Angular 4 is different from Angular 1 and 2. It solves the problem when the app grows and becomes complex very well. They have modules for reusable components. Yeah. I remember they added components and stuff. I think Angular started doing that in an updated version of Angular JS and then Angular 2, 3, 4. Yeah, I, honestly, I don't remember that much, but it was kind of nice that there were commands that I could just run from the terminal and it would spin up a new component. There was a lot less, I don't want to say, there was just as so much boilerplate, but it was a lot less me typing out all of the boilerplate, I guess. Um, Let's see. Okay. But it was weird. Um, 
one of the big Angular apps that I worked in, there was a bridge between React and Angular, and it was a very um, strange environment because I was trying to map Angular data and components with React data and components and stuff. So component services, modules, pipes, directives, yeah. Yeah, I don't think there's a comparable, um, there is there anything comparable to that in Vue yet. Although it would be interesting if they added some of those automated features to the Vue CLI. Let's see. All right, my reset timer does work. Okay, works just fine. Okay, I think I can officially say that I have completed that task. Um, create a timer, done that. Okay. Now this is create level zero items to purchase. So if you look at the requirements, there are different items you can purchase. Actually, I'm gonna show the model uh, cookie clicker. Um, let's see, cookie clicker. Yeah. Let me get 15. So if you want to have 15 cookies, I can go purchase a cursor here. And that cursor automatically clicks. I don't know if you can see it, but it says every 0.1 seconds. Or no, no, no. It gives me 0.1 cookies per second. So see how it automatically went up to nine cookies? So that I need to do something similar in my game, basically. So... And this is kind of the store of everything you can buy. There's items and then there's also these, um, what do you call it, enhancements, I guess? Oh, it calls them upgrades. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, these are upgrades to make your items more effective and then these are the actual items. Um, but mine's not gonna be that complicated. All right, so, um, yeah, I'm gonna start off with some just basic items. I do have mock-ups for this. So if I go to Kitty Clicker, um, this is just like the main readme on the repo. Let's see. Welcome screen, MVP, page, version one. Let's see. Yeah, this version one, this is the store that I want to create. So I don't, I'm not going to have the boost yet. That would be the upgrade feature, I guess. Um, I'm just going to count pers. So yeah, the store, I need to add a couple items in the store. And the first items here are food. You can buy food and you can buy mice. Um, I'm going to put toy mice. It'd be kind of weird to buy live mice for your cat. Maybe some places people do that. I don't know. Okay, so food and mice. So food is 15 pers. Mice is 25 pers. So actually, I think to um, to do this correctly, I think I need data somewhere, and. I didn't think about generating the data already. Let me make a folder. I'll just call it data.js. Oh wait, not the folder name. What am I doing? So the folder will just be data. And then let, let me create a new file. And these will be items.js. There we go. And now I'll just export default an array of the items. Um, let's see. Command, yeah. Okay, and in my items, I want to do, I need to denote the cost and how many pers per second it will give me. This is kind of an inflated number 
0.5 and 1. Maybe I should change it because on Kitty Clicker it was like 0.1. So maybe I'll do 0 0.1 and 0 0.2. Um, yeah, and make hers will, I guess, be a, a float. Okay, so I'll do, um, well, let me create my first, oops, object first. So I'll do that. And then I'm going to do, let me do name. I need name. So the first one is food. Um, let me call this dry food. So if you have a cat, you know, you can get dry food or canned food. I think most people get a combination of both. Um, but dry food's cheaper, so I'm going to put dry food as the first item. And then cost will be 15 purse. So cost will be that. And then um, purse per second or whatever. I don't know. Increment? Uh... I don't know, purrs per second? So you can use JavaScript modules in Vue.js and they use Babel or something like that. Yeah, Vue sets up Babel for you. Um, it sets up Webpack, which handles running Babel and ESLint and all those other things. Um, yeah, I don't know. So in when you spin up an Angular app, I'm guessing Angular still uses Webpack. Are they can you overwrite Angular or can you overwrite Webpack options? Because this is one problem that I had in some some React apps I've built is that I have to eject after I use create React app, I have to eject because I want to um, update some Webpack settings. So I don't know how that's handled in Angular, or if you know. Uh, let's see. I'm just going to call this purrs per second. I can't think of anything else. And it's not too important. And everybody kind of knows what that means. So I'll, I'll do point 0.1. Uh, let me do make this proper. 0 0.1. Okay. And now... Oops. And then I'm going to do, let's see, okay, uh, toy mice, I'm going to do toy mice, let's see, toy mice, the cost is 25, and that's another thing though, is that every time I buy one, the cost of the second one should go up. So I'm going to have to figure that out um, based off of how many I own. Oh yeah, and then I have to keep track of, you know, how many of each item I own. So, hey Mary Rod, how are you? Um, Angular use Webpack and you can change the Webpack settings. Sometimes you can overwrite it using Mix. What's Mix? I don't think I've ever heard of that before. All right. What am I doing? Um, so I have those. Oh yeah, let me go ahead and uh, do this too. All right. This is it's a lot more here. Oh, like Laravel Mix. I haven't used PHP in a very long time. My first job used PHP, and then I haven't used it very much since then. Uh, let's see. Okay, so seconds. Where am I at? Where am I at? Okay, I have my items. Let me pull them into my store. So I'll import items from at. So at, I'll reference my source and then data uh, slash items. And then on my state. I'll just put items here. Um, there, okay. 
So now I have my items, which I should have made a card for that, I guess, but oh, I think I did. I think that was part of my um, part of my create level zero items to purchase card, which I don't have a checklist in there, but yeah, I created the items. I put them on store. Oh no, these are the default items, so I'm not pulling them in from an API, so I can just, oh, let me, yeah. so I'll just set them directly on store. Okay, and then in my app here, I can pull in the items, let's see, map state, should I do this here? Actually, I should make another component. So here's the first component. And one second, as I'm doing this, I'm seeing things. So I'm going to move this button down real quick. Okay, so I'm going to use a styling class um, from Prime View. So I can do margin bottom five, um, or no, top. Yeah, that would be top. There, that looks better. Anyway. Um, so this will be the right side of the page. So let me do a grid here, actually. And I wonder, my app.js is the parent. No, I don't have a grid in there. So I wonder, should I do the grid by component? Or should I just wrap this in a grid? I'm going to do it by component. So here, I'm going to do... Um, Let's say div class equals uh, p grid, and then let's see, and then this will be div, and then all right. So that's my grid, and then, wait, and then I need another div, and this will be, because in the mockups, so I need it side by side. So I'm just going to do six columns and six columns. So let me, and then I want to center, or let me do column offset too. So main page, display flex. So in the first part, let me put P column five and then P P offset one. Oops. And then down here I can do class equals P. Let's see. I can do class P column. Yeah, I guess this would have to be the same. So five and then that. And then here's where I want to have another component. And this is going. <coughs> Sorry, one second. I don't think I'll be able to finish in this stream because I have to leave for an appointment in a bit. Okay, so anyway. Let's see, div. Uh, what component do I want? Oh, yeah, the store. So, I don't know. I don't want to call it store because in the mockups I also have actual store pages that I'm. Wait, yeah, store pages that I might add later. We can see all the items by themselves. Um, I guess I could call it like store list. Or items, let me call it items, store items. I don't know. I'll just call it something. I can always change it later. So let me call it store items dot view. And let's see. Oh, wait. Store items. Yeah. And then not 
tossing in anything yet. So I'll just do store items. They've imported it for me, but I need to add it, register it as a component store items. All right. So now I have store items and yeah, I really need to um, get my snippets on this computer, but let me, okay. So store items, let's see inside store items. I'm going to have basically a header and that's going to say store and then view all link later, but not right now. So just store. And then after that, oops, after that, I'm going to have the list. So just, I'm going to loop through all of the items in some kind of list. All right. So UL and then LI, and then I'll just put that as a placeholder for now. All right, let's see. All right, that looks fine. One thing I'm gonna add is some kind of vertical line just to make this look a bit nicer. Shop list. Yeah, shop list would work too. I already have store written. I think I have store written everywhere. And maybe that's because I built, I had a store app and I've used it in so many different, or I planned a store app and I've used it in so many different courses and live streams now. Um, let's see, okay. So I need that to loop through the items here. And oh yeah, I said I was gonna uh, get a vertical divider. This one's already styled, so I'm just gonna borrow this. Yeah, I don't know if you can see it, but it's this little gray line. Okay, so let me import divider and I'm gonna put it in main here. So let me do it here. Oh wait, not right there. Let me do it there. Wait, did I? Yeah, I messed that up. Okay, I'm not sure what I'm doing. Let me recopy this and then go here. And then I need to add divider here. Divider. Okay, and then here, yeah, I think I have to do, oh yeah, divider and layout. So I need the layout prop, so I'm just copy that. And that should be everything that I need. Oh wait, exit. Normal mode, and then here, I'm going to, there, and that should, let's see, yeah. I don't know if you can even see it, but there is a gray line. You should be able to see it. There's definitely a gray line there. And now I have the store and items. So uh, let me go. Yeah, so here I'm gonna import the items directly in here. I don't think I'm gonna import them in um, main here. Yeah, I think I'll just keep it how it is. I have the other side in here. And then store items will handle everything to do with the items. Oops. So um, I need a script tag, script tag, and in here I'm going to export default, and this will be the object. Okay, and now, let's see, I don't need data, I do need computed because I'm gonna pull in, um, no, that would be for map, yeah, for map state. So I need to map my, the state from Vuex so I can access my items on my global store. So I do map state, and I don't know why, because I have that new extension, Volar, for Vue.js now, um, and it does weird things like import here put my import on top of my script tag. Um, only if it's the first one. Anyway, okay, so map state, and now I can, let me pass in an array, and I can do, oh wait, 
Well, I'll fix that in one second. So map state, I'll get items from that. And now it's complaining because computer should be just a op regular object, not a function. Okay, so now I have items here and now I can use a directive to loop over them. So I'll use before and before items and item. And I need a unique key. So what's gonna be unique? I can't, well, I mean cost will be unique, but I think the name would be what I'd use since there's no ID here. So key equals name. Oh wait, item dot name. Okay. And then in here too, so uh, this would be item dot name. Let me just leave it like that for now. Yay! And I have the names. Now this is unstyled and I don't really have time to style it. So I'm going to just try to make this make sense or look nice, I guess. So I'm going to do item, yeah, cost. So I'll just put item.cost here. And then, okay. All right. So dry food and toy mice, that's the cost of it. I need to actually make these into buttons and then you can purchase them. So what I'm gonna need actually, cause I have all of these available items and then I'm gonna need another thing here, something like purchased items. And this will start out as an empty array And then I'm gonna have to, yeah, be able to purchase the items. I think I'm gonna have to do one more stream on this. So let me go ahead and update my project board anyway. So I did that, created the level zero items to purchase. Oh wait, that's right, these are level zero items. So there has to be a level associated with this. So I'm gonna have to do level, and this will be zero. Oh yeah, and the next one's just level zero too. So level uh, zero. Okay, so I have that and I'll have to check the level eventually. And oh, wait, that reminds me is that I need a level for the user here. So I think I should create a user object since the user, I don't have a separate um, store module for users. So I'm gonna create a user here and I'm just going to say level because I might want other information about the user. But for right now, I'll just say level is zero. Okay, so purchase items in user. I'll have to work on those next time. Create purchasing logic to be able to purchase items. Um, and then I guess the next thing would be create the rest of store items and allow user to purchase based off of level. Okay, that's fine. And then one thing I have to do before that last ticket is um, allow, I guess the user, I need logic to check uh, let's say implement logic to check user level. All right, cool. So yeah, I have create purchasing logic and then check user level and then let them purchase based off of the user level. Um, I guess there has to be another thing here because as the timer counts up, once they buy the items, it should automatically create PERS. So, uh, internet functionality 
need to generate pers from items purchased. That almost sounds like a pun. All right. Yeah, I think these two go together and then the user level logic. Um, yeah, sorry if that was far away. For what is q and A? I'm not sure. What do you mean q and A? Did I have q and A here? Q. Oh, oh, here. QA. Yeah, I don't know why I put an and there. That was QA to make sure things were working before I put them in done. Um, I don't know if I need that on such a small app. Probably not. I'll just delete it. Yeah. Q&A. Yeah, that was... I was probably thinking of Q&A or looking at Q&A while I was writing it. Alright. So, uh, create... Purchasing. Yeah, so I think these are all the next steps that I need. And if you have any suggestions or recommendations, um, I would like, I think one thing that would be interesting just in general after the stream is to um, discuss a little bit about Angular and the differences with Vue. That's something I'm interested in seeing more because, you know, in the past year I've done quite a bit of React and Vue. And, you know, I've taught both React and Vue, but I know a lot less about Angular. So, yeah, that would be an interesting comparison. So join my Discord if you want to join in some discussions like that. And I think that's it. Yeah, I have an appointment soon, so I have to eat something and run. Um, and then if you have... <laughs> Uh, if you have any suggestions for me, let me know. Real quick, Smelly Badger says to stay away from Angular because it causes uh, them stress at work. All right, noted. Um, let's, yeah, I'm trying to think. I thought there was something I'm forgetting, but I think not. So, um, yeah, I'll have, I'll have all these links posted in my Discord. And, yeah, hope to see you in the next stream soon. Take care. Hi everyone, good morning. There's a welcome screen and then you get to this screen where you can click to get PERS. And then there's no way of leveling up yet, but I just added a level variable last time. And I also don't have the functionality where you can actually buy these store items. So uh, I'm hoping to get that done today. And then I'm gonna put this on GitHub pages. So anyone can just come to the page and try it out so there will be a live demo for this so um yeah so i'm gonna go ahead and get started um oh by the way uh deepak junk time lord good morning everybody so junk time lord says that they got uh oh a blog that it took a month to write went super viral and even got featured on weeklies and podcasts. That's awesome. Actually, do you have a link for that that you can post here, either here or in my Discord so I can take a look? Um, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and get started with this. I think I put these in order last time, so I'm going to drag this over. And yeah, let me get started. So I turned this into an issue already. So there's, all right, I'm going to copy this link. Drunk Time Lord just posted a link to this article. So I'm going to copy it for later. This Twitch. Yeah, I can copy. There we go. I have a clipboard manager. So I can go back and look at everything I've copied for the last so many hours. All right. Um, Let's see, there needs to be one variable for total accrued PERS and one for total spent. Um, oh yeah, I think I've done this already. Let me go and check. So here's Kitty Clicker. And in my source, views, I think this will be on the main page. And then I have PERS here. Oh yeah, I just have one for PERS. 
So what it's saying is there needs to be, I need to keep track of the total PERS because that's going to denote my level. I think I'm going to be calculating the level based off of the total PERS, but I'm going to be also spending money as I go along, so I need to account for that. So let me, um, here, let me make total PERS. Or I, I guess I could just keep PERS and then total spent, maybe. Make a new variable for that. Okay, and then on the screen, all I'm going to show is um, the total PERS, but what they have currently. So that would be minus total spent. I think that's good. Okay, and now I need a way to spend money. So I have this store items component. Let's see. There we go. So store items, and this loops through all the items that are in my data. I just made these real quick last time. So I have name, cost, pers level. So basically, I want to subtract the cost from my, or I want to add it to my total spent, right? And I want to make sure I have enough pers left. So let me go ahead and do that. I'm going to have to make a check to make sure it's not, I get, or to make sure I'm not overspending. But let's see. Um, so let me see how I'm going to do this. Cost is 15. So I have to. Somehow there has to be an on click here. Um, item name, item cost, and yeah, I'm gonna have to pass in some information here because the variable is here. So total spent, I'm gonna have to pass in some kind of function to update that variable. And then also, I'm going to need to, yeah, I'm going to need to pass in a total amount so that I can know if the person is even eligible to buy an item right now or if they don't have enough money. So, because otherwise I'm going to disable the click. So let's see. Uh, let me just call it something new, current total. And I guess I could make a getter for this or a computed. So let me do that. That would make the most sense. Even though it's simple now, it might get more complicated. So let me say total. What did I call it up here? Oh, current total. Current total. Um, and current total will be uh, return pers minus I'm going to say total pers and change that variable and actually I need to access it on this so um, so let me do this dot total pers and then minus this dot uh, total wait, <laughs> total spent Okay, and then if I come, oh yeah, here I need to do total, and then pers. Okay, so total spent, total pers, and I have the current total. So now if I come up here, I can just say equals, current total. Okay, so I'm passing in the current total, that's good, and then I need to create some kind of a function to update the total spent. So I guess I'll call it 
spend spend purrs yeah that's fine uh, spend purrs I have increment purrs so let me put it after this I'll do spend purrs alright and We do. So basically, I need to pass in. What do I want this function to do? So this function will have to take the amount of purrs. So I'll keep that locally here. I'll have the amount of purrs. And then I need to do this dot uh, purrs. Per spent, I guess. What was it spent? Oh, total spent. That was it. Total spent, and that would be minus equals, I guess. So let's see. Minus equals. Can I find minus e minus equals and Purrs. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. So I need to now go and implement my spend purrs function. So actually, I'll put it after v4 and the key. So I'll do an at click here. At click and that will be no spend no I'll have to pass this in as a function then if I'm gonna be passing in a variable so spend hers and then that will be a function that I'm going to well I'm gonna to have to pass in the item dot cost and that will be the amount of purrs that I'm spending Okay, then I have computed, um, oh yeah, I need a prop, I need to define this prop now. Okay, so if I define the prop, it feels like it's really early for some reason, but it's already almost 8.30 a.m. here, so... Maybe it's just because it's getting cold already. Um, okay, props, what was I? Oh yeah, I need the spend spend purrs function. And this will be a function. So I'll do type function and then required okay I think that's it this should work and then it will spend purrs and then yeah let me see if this works and then I can add some checking to make sure they're overspending so let's see um, oh purrs not a number oh wait 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 because I didn't update the variable name. So let me go here. Yeah. Is it total? Is it current total? No. Oh, wait. That is what I want here, though, is current total. Because in my getter, it's already um, doing that for me. Let's see. Um, yeah, current total, total, total purrs minus total spent. Okay, so let's see if that works. So it's at zero. This isn't working. I assume, yeah, none of these are working. Let's see what's going on. I assume because I'm using the wrong variable on the click. So let's see. Uh, the image, so I have this at click increment purrs. 
and I have increment pers. Yeah, I have the wrong variable name. So I need to just change that to total pers. All right. So let's see. Reset. Okay, that is incrementing. That's good. And this is two. Sweet. Awesome. All right. Um, I'm going to add some kind of a separator here to make it look a little bit nicer, I think. Instead of just in a list, I want to make, I'm going to style this list, I guess, real quick. Um, because it's not real apparent when you're clicking on a list item that it's supposed to do something. So I'm just going to put it inside the component here in a style tag. So style, and then this. And yeah, I'll just style it as a list. I have no other lists right now. So I think, oh wait, let me use lang equals sass okay so I think I can do the ul I don't even remember these CSS styles um, for making a list look not like a list but I think it's on the ul I can do uh, list style oh it's giving me hints that's good list style none yeah okay that's good and then I can do li and it's like really poor syntax highlighting here all right hey nobodies I wish I could join your shame unfortunately at the same time I have zoom meetings app looks cool though wish you the best thanks nobodies yeah, I have almost no Zoom meetings, so I guess I'm pretty lucky. But I do have to start work in maybe like an hour. Um, yeah, good luck with your work today. Let's see. I'm just really trying to wrap up this app um, so I can move on to other ones. And actually not really move on, but move back to a couple things I've done before. All right. Let's see, what was I going to do with the list? Um, I think I'm going to add a border to each item. So I'll do one pixel solid that's by default black. And then I'll put padding. So let's say 10 pixels. Oh, that's up and down, right? So let's do five pixels and then 10 pixels left and right. All right, that's better anyway. And then I'm going to give it a margin uh, bottom. Wait, bottom, yeah. And this will be, let's say, five pixels. OK, that looks pretty good, I think. It's much better anyway, so you get an idea of it. All right, it is kind of weird when I click on one of these, it's just directly adding to PERS when really it needs to be adding to the amount spent, so it should be subtracting from PERS. So let me actually see what's going on there. Uh, I have some kind of bug in my logic. Okay, so spent PERS, oh, this does not reflect the, var the variable name. So, oh no, wait, yeah, because I'm passing it in. So I'm taking the argument and that's what's subtracting from total spent. So minus equals total spent. No, no, no. Oh, that's totally backwards. Okay, I see what I did. So that needs to be plus because I want to know the total amount that I've spent. Because if I keep subtracting, it gets to be a smaller and smaller number. So naturally, when I calculate total PERS minus total spent, PERS is going to look larger. This current total getter is going to look larger 
just because this number is getting smaller. But now I have to add to it, so now it's going to actually subtract. So let's see. Let's see. Let me refresh all that. Okay. So, okay, I have some purrs. Really? Okay, I have another issue then. Let me try refreshing. It's not what's supposed to happen. It's supposed to take away my purrs. Okay, let me figure out what's going on. Um, let's see, spend purrs. I have that function, which total spent plus equals purrs. Okay, and then did I just not save it? Let me see. Yeah, I didn't save the file. Okay, so that is working then. Alright, um, so that's working. Now I do need to check somehow here, and this should not be clickable or it should be disabled if, um, if they don't have enough purrs basically. So, and I could just, the easy thing, hey Ernesto, how are you? Yeah, it's been a while. I yeah, one one reason I guess is that um I don't know, with my work schedule, I haven't been able to have like the same time every single week streaming. So it's been, you know, sometimes I would stream, you know, Thursday morning, sometimes it's Tuesday morning, sometimes it's different mornings. So, yeah, sorry about that. Hopefully I can have a more consistent schedule at some point. I'm just trying to do at least one or two streams every week. Okay, so I have, um, by the way, here's the app I'm working on. I pushed a couple times, so last I did some last week and the week before. And, well, I actually pushed, yeah, I pushed today because I forgot to push last week, but that's the code from last week. So you can see what's already made. There's a project board on GitHub. So these are all the tasks that I've done so far. And yeah, this is what the main page looks like. And now I'm trying to, by the way, if you haven't, the app is based off of Cookie Clicker. So if you haven't seen Cookie Clicker, uh, you can check it out and see what you think. It is a waste of time, but kind of interesting to see. It was like an app that took the web? I don't know if you'd call it, but it was really popular in the early 2000s, late 90s. Um, and it's gone, somehow it's been thriving until today. But there's a lot more features in that app. I'm just trying to do a basic version. So I have, um, Let's see. So I want to make these look disabled, actually, if I don't have enough purrs. Um, and right now, I do want, like when you hover, I want there to be a cursor, but I want them to be disabled, like grayed out or something. So I'm gonna have to make a style class here. And that's where I really, wish I'd set up an auto formatter. Uh, let's see. I'm just formatting myself. Okay. So I need some kind of class here. Let's see. What do I want to call the class? I'm going to put this in, I guess I can just do an object. I think I'm only going to have one class here. So, wait, 
to do it inside of there. And now I can, what should I call a class? If I want it to be, I guess it's just disabled. And I can say disabled is true. Um, I think, I, I can't remember the exact syntax, but I think I have to have the Boolean logic first, right? For view, and then I used to catch your live streams regularly when I was working from home. Nowadays, I'm on premise and can't do other stuff while I'm working. Yeah, I remember those days. Um, the funny thing is, is that, oops, it wasn't that everyone was working all the time on premise, it was that, you know. Some people would be watching YouTube, some people would be walking around, so. Yeah, I I don't know where I was going with that. Maybe I need some coffee, but I don't think that watching streams at home is any less productive than what people were doing when I used to work in an office. So there's that. Okay, I'm gonna look this up real quick. Let's see, um, view. Vue.js uh, CSS class object syntax. I don't know why, like I can zoom in on the browser, but this top part will never zoom in. It just stays small. I need to figure out how to do that. Okay, so class and style bindings in view 3. Yeah, here's what I'm looking for. So, active, okay, so this is the class name, and then this is the Boolean saying to use the class or not. Okay, so, uh, let's see, what's the, the class name will be disabled, and then the Boolean will be well, I have the spend pers function. Oh yeah, I am passing in a, a separate prop. So current total. Now I can see, let me see, current total. If current total is greater, or no, if it's less than item.cost, I want to disable the button. So. Let me just make a quick disabled uh, class style here. Okay, so I disabled and then I guess I'll just do background. Is there a light gray? Maybe just the default. Okay, well, it's not using the class right now, but real quick, I do wanna make it so it's not clickable either. So I'll have to, let's see, spend pers, it would be right here. So if um, pers is greater than current total, because then I'll know if I have money to spend. So I'll do that. And then, yeah. I think if you want to zoom the browser itself, it's more about your appearance settings of the OS. Oh, okay. Thank you. I need to look at that. Hey, Calamity. How are you? All right. Current total is not defined. Oh, I must not be using this. Yeah. Uh, this dot current total. Okay. Well, okay, did I do that backwards? So if pers is greater, then, oh yeah, because it is greater. Um, let's see, what logic do I want? I want to make sure that current total is actually greater than pers, so I'm gonna have to change that to a lesser than sign. 
No. Yeah. Because there have to be enough. And actually, this is backwards. I want to do it the other way. So I think it reads better. Okay, so if this dot current total is greater than hers, then I can spend money. All right, there must be something weird about the timer too. Okay, so I can't spend, and now I spent, yes, okay. That's good. So I do, yeah, so now I can spend items, but I don't think the items go anywhere right now. So I buy items. So I spent PERS. Actually, I should change this to buy an item because I need to have some kind of action here that, let's see. And these should all go in the store so I can persist it as well. Okay, I think what I'm gonna have to do is, where's my store? I have kittens, kitten name. These are all from the welcome screen. And then timer, seconds, items. Here's my purchased items variable. So I need to, and I can just make a mutation for this to update or add purchased item. I don't have any way to delete them. I guess there is no way to delete them because you just want more and more of them. I don't think you ever want to get rid of one. Okay, so purchase items. So let me just call the mutation purchase item then. And it will just add to, oops, payload, and then state dot purchased items. And this will dot push, and then the new item, which will be the payload. Okay. And then my purchased items, I don't know where I want to show those yet. Or maybe I should just show, maybe I'll just show account somewhere. Like this is what I have for each purchased item. Let me see. Okay. So. I guess I didn't, let me see the mockups for this. Yeah, I didn't actually think about showing, I mean on the store page that I have mocked up, um, you can see the number of each item, but I didn't mock that up anywhere else. So yeah, I need to add it somewhere here. So maybe Maybe just at the top of store. Or no, no, no. Yeah, there is. I do show how many here. So there's two, one. So it shows how many here. All right. I think if you if you play the actual cookie clicker game, I'm just going to show you real quick. Uh, cookie clicker. Let's see. Yeah. I'm just going to purchase an item real quick because they show up in the middle here, which is kind of nice. Oh, wait, I think I need a granny. Oh, no. Well, they do show up in the middle here. I don't know if I want to do this right now. My cursor is helping me click. I'm going to really click a hundred times. That's fine. <laughs> All right, so I have 100 cookies. I can get a granny. And so this bar shows up, and this bar will have all my grannies. Of course, this is a little bit more complicated than what I want to do. But yeah, eventually you get so many grannies, and then more bars show up. Like, um, you have temples that make cookies, and yeah, all that other stuff. I need to write a script that clicks for me. Um, which interestingly a lot of people do on this game. 
And you can see that cookies are auto incrementing right now because I have, you know, I have one granny that's baking and one cursor that's clicking for me. So I'm not even clicking right now and it's still incrementing cookies. Um, yeah, and there's all kinds of achievements and news that I get. And this is just a really cool game with various, yeah, I guess various different types of features that work together. Okay, so I'm going to close that. And yeah, I need to know how many items, but it would be nice to see the items in the middle I mean, th so the clicker mice on that game, they go around the cookie. So they kind of surround the cookie and eventually you get all these different mice and you can see them clicking. And uh, let's see. Yeah, and then you can show the items in the middle somehow. But actually I don't have graphics for those either. So I'm just gonna do like the mock-up shows and show the number of each item and see how that goes. Um, Cause there are only a few items anyway. All right, so let's see that. And yeah, these should be auto incrementing once I get items. So the first step is to actually save the items as I purchase them. So in my index, I need to call this purchase item mutation. And let's see, I'm calling spend here. Um, and actually what I think I'm going to do that I have to do eventually anyway, is I need to move uh, total purrs and total spend. I need to move these to my actual store. Because even you can see here, like when I refresh, because it's just in the component, this restarts. So I need to fix that. So let me go ahead and fix that. Um, let's see. User purchased items, items. Yeah, I'm going to have to add it somewhere here. Items, purchased items. Yeah, let me do total hers and then total spent <laughs> and see okay oh man total purrs and total spent um spend purrs i don't know because there's no other way to spend purrs other than purchase an item. So what I'm going to have to do is pass in, um, well, the item cost actually. Okay, so the item cost will be on the item. So I can just pass in the payload, that will be the item. And then what I can do is state dot uh, total spent and that will um, yeah I can do plus equals because it's a mutation so plus equals the number plus equals oh yeah payload dot cost because that will be the store item um, Maybe I'll just call this item here. And item, yeah. Okay. That works. So, item.cost, total spent. So I'm incrementing the total spent. Purchased item. So I guess inside the component is where I won't let them purchase. I'll do the check to make sure they have enough purrs to spend. Okay, so I have purchase item, and now I need to change my logic a little. So let me get rid of total purrs and total spent here. And actually level two, 
and map those because I have all of those in here. So I'm gonna do, I already have map state timer seconds. So I'm just gonna add on to this and say um, total furs, total spent. And what was the other thing is, I guess I'll have to do user and then on user I have the level here. So I have level, oh yeah, so this will become user.level. And let me see. Yeah, of course this doesn't work. Um, and it's probably giving me an error right now. Yeah, total purse is read only, and I think I'm trying to be model it. No, I'm trying to update it in increment purse. Okay, so increment purse, this will now need to be um, on state as well. Yeah, so I'll just add that here, and it will be state that total purse plus equals one and actually yeah I'm gonna have to um, I should pass in the number like how much to increment by because eventually there will be items that will be incrementing I don't even know how I'm gonna do that yet let me just leave it like it is right now and I don't have to pass in anything so now I just have increment pers and purchase item that I have to. Okay. So spend pers. Um. Let's see. Where's my increment? So I have increment pers here. There's no increment pers function. So I need to pull this in map mutations. I need to pull in uh, increment pers and then purchase item. So uh, purchase item. Okay. So those are good. Current total even should be a getter now that I have this on state. In my store so uh, let me go ahead and do that and then I'll do map getters and this will be um, an array and that will be um, oh yeah current total okay and now I need to make a getters object and this will have my current total and then I believe on getters I get state as well right so I should be able to do state okay let's see if that works um, yeah I don't know yet unknown getter current total I do have a getter here though, which is current total. Um, let's see. Okay, what am I doing wrong here? Oh, this has to be getters. There we go. Yeah. Okay, well that's working. Current total or passed to component but could not automatically be inherited because component renders okay I think also yeah I'm not defining it as a prop even though I'm passing I'm passing current total in which I'll just leave it like that even though it's a getter but I'll just define it on props so let's see I'm going to do type current total 
and this will be a number and required oops uh, required is true okay that's good all right so let's see it's been almost an hour let me see where I'm at yay cool so these are actually disabled right now Yay, and now it's enabled. Computer property total spent is read-only. Okay, so now I have another book. I'm trying to spend money, but I can't. So it's clicking on spend pers. Actually, I need to, I think now that the function that I want to call is purchase item, I think I can just map purchase item directly to this component. Let me see. Purchase, yeah, there's no reason to pass it in from the parent, I guess, anymore. So let me make uh, methods, and then I can do map, map mutations. And then this will be uh, purchase item Is that? yeah that's right okay and then if I go up here instead of spend purse I'll be doing purchase item and I'll have the item I'm just gonna be passing in the whole item actually yeah but the thing is, I have to check. I have to check if I can purchase the item. So maybe I need, what I want to do is do like an intermediate function and then call the mutation if they qualify. So let me see. Um, let me do check purchase. Since I'm just performing validation on it, let's see. I'm going to get rid of this spend purse. I don't need that anymore. And methods. So let me make a new method. And this will be check purchase. Okay. Um, oh, yeah. I received the item there. So I'm going to check, let's see, if if this this dot current total. So if this dot current total is greater than item dot cost. This is the same thing I did in the other component. Then I can yeah, purchase. Then I can call the purchase function. Okay, um, but I really want to get a couple more things done in this stream. So let's see. I have, oh yeah, I want to call this dot purchase item. So that's a function that I can call and I, yeah, I just need to pass in the item basically. So let me see if that works. Let me refresh. Okay, let me get up to this. Sweet! It did work. And now I can't purchase. That's good. Now let me see. Uh, extra non prop attributes spend purrs were passed. Okay, spend purrs. I think that's just because here I'm passing it in. Um, Oh yeah, I do have it here, so let me get rid of this. I don't need that anymore. All right, I think that's good. And then I guess the next thing I need to do is um, actually, so I am storing these items, and let me check here actually. So if I go to, oh yeah, in UX, I have my purchased items. I should have my purchased items. 
purchased items. Um, I don't have, let's see. That's weird. Let me look at my logic here. Hey, Data Dev, how are you? Something is wrong. I have methods, this dot purchase item, purchase item. Let's see, I'm incrementing how much money I've spent, which seems to be working. But then I have state dot purchased items dot push item. Why isn't that working? Um, let me just try real quick to see if that mutation is getting called. Oh, I have so many set seconds. Okay, let me purchase. Yeah, okay. Purchase item. So it is setting It is setting uh, or sending over the correct payload, which is the item. That's good. And then state. Yeah, so I do have purchased items for some reason. Okay, good. I have two items purchased. Purse per second. Good, good, good. Um, I need some kind of increment or variable here. Yeah, the set seconds is showing, I think all, all showing up here. Anyway, um, because so these items, they auto increment a certain number of purrs per second. Like if I get dry food and toy mice, if I get one of each, then I get three or 0 0.3 purrs per second, which will start to auto increment hers um, okay so how, how am I gonna do that I already have my timer which I guess in here it's setting seconds every second but I also need to update purs uh, let me make another function here and actually, okay, so I have total purrs, total spent, I have purchased items. Now I could just go into purchase items and have a getter and calculate each time, but I think what I'm going to do is um, auto, some kind of auto increment value, like how much do I want to automatically increment by every second. So let's see. I don't know what to call it except auto in increment pers or value or something. I don't know. Um, okay. So I have this weirdly named variable, and now inside my timer, every time every second I need to add by that value. So let's see. So yeah, all I have to do is commit um, update purrs. And actually auto increment, because I have another increment function here which just adds one every time so I don't know if I want to call this auto increment value. Um, let me call it like auto purrs per second or something. Auto purrs per second. Okay. And then I'm making another function here, which is, uh, what was I going to call it? Update purrs. Update purrs. And this will be state. And then um, 
yeah and then this will just get called every second so basically what what it will be I'm gonna update the total uh, pers so state total pers plus equals uh, state dot what is it the auto auto pers per second yeah I think that's it and even update pers update pers seems to make me think I need to pass something in so maybe I want to call this like uh, what do I want to call it update pers auto update pers because I'm I'm only ever calling this every second so okay so auto update pers and let me just change it here auto update pers okay and oh yeah so I do need to actually have something stored in this variable so when I purchase an item what I'm gonna need to do is total spent I need to do state dot auto pers per second and that will plus equal the item dot what is on the item it will be pers per second yeah pers per second okay I think this will work let me see it wasn't wasn't as hard as I thought okay so I have enough for dry food Nope, there's some kind of error here. Is there an error? Okay. Well, it's uh, working, but um, yeah, in the getter, I'm going to have to round, I think. I don't even think I want decimals. Yeah, okay. So I'm going to round here, but it is working. That's good. Um, where, where am I getting that value? So I have, let's see. So I have my getters, or my one getter. Just current total. So I need state.pers to have the actual value, but um, I want this to be rounded. Total spent. Yeah, so I think I'm going to just do, and math.pers is the only value that's not an integer. Or no, no, no. What am I talking about, math.pers? Uh, State.totalpers. So I can do math dot round. Yeah, uh, the value to be rounded to the nearest integer. Okay, good. So this will round to the nearest integer. And this is just a getter, so I'm not actually updating any of my state here. This is just rounding. So let me try this out. Okay, so I'm going to leave it alone, and yeah, it is auto-incrementing. Every so often you can see the purrs go up. So yay, this works. That's awesome. And then I can keep buying things. Oh yeah, one more thing real quick. What time is it? All right, one more thing is that I want to show like how many items someone's purchased, right? So... I should be able to see the number of items beside the store. Um, now I could do a getter for this. Let me think. So if I have, let's see, for item and items, 
item.name and then I would want to do uh, put something here which would be you know some kind of value so how would I calculate that value for each item so I would probably I could map the purchased items here and then calculate I think so in a getter, let me see, in a getter I can pass in an argument, right? Let me see, ux getter. Um, okay. So here's getters, I get state. I get other getters. Oh yeah. You can pass, you have to return a function. So this is the same thing you have to do if you do computed in a component. So you have to pass in a function and then the function will take the argument. So otherwise you're just returning a value. Okay, so I have to return a function that takes the argument that I want. So let me make a getter here. And the getter will be, oops, will, uh, I guess, item count. Yeah, oh, oops, I'll make an item count getter. So I'll call this item count. No, item. No, purchased, yeah, purchased item count. And so the outer function, I get state from UX. And now I have to return an inner function. And this will take the item that I want to count. And I have to make that a function. Um, and now I want to count. So I'm going to have to loop through. I have state dot purchased items. So I'm going to have to filter and then take the length. So I think if I do return state dot purchased items dot filter, is there a is there a function that does it without filter and then length? Uh, maybe. Hey, Mono Magician, how are you? All right. By the way, if you joined, this is the app that I'm working on. I'm trying to finish one more thing. I'm trying to just show, oops, show the number of purchased items here, the actual number of items they've purchased like in the mock-up here. Okay, so I'm going to do state.purchaseitems.filter and this will be a function too. Oh wait, I'm already getting item. So purchased item. And then let's see, that's a function so I have to um, return something return so I guess purchased item dot ID is there an ID on these items no okay I'll just do it by name then because whatever so return p item dot name equals item dot name so that will filter and then this will be an array so I should be able to take link and let me try this out. So purchased item count. Now I have to map this getter to the component. So in computed, I can map getters and then I can do purchased item count. And now, let me see. So I'll have to call this function. 
So purchased item count and then pass in the item. Um, oh, wait, wait, wait. This um, has to be parsed as JavaScript. So I'm going to have to put that inside the double curly braces. And there we go. All right, cool. Yay! This exactly shows how many I have. And it increments, it properly subtracts. As I buy more, my purrs are incrementing faster. Yay! Now I'm getting pretty much two every second. Oh, it works! <laughs> Thanks, Ernesto. Anyone else play clicker games when you were younger? Okay, so let me look at my project board now. So create purchasing logic. I'm going to edit this. I don't know why. Oh, I don't have that properly spaced. There we go. Okay, update. Now I can check these off. So there needs to be one variable for accrued pers and spent. I already did that logic. When a user clicks on an item to purchase, the total spent is updated. That works. The total remaining should be displayed for the user to see. Um, so that's this number. This is actually the total remaining that they have. OK. Um, I just can't stop clicking. OK, so that's done. Then I can actually close this issue. There we go. So implement functionality to generate pers from items purchased. That's what I'm doing based off the timer here. So that's auto generating pers. So that's done. Implement logic to check user level. Uh, nope, there's no leveling up or user level yet. So that's still an outstanding task and that will probably stay there. Um, create the rest of the store items. So right now, I just have these two items in the store. But if you look at the requirements, so I have the readme and then I have requirements.md. And I show, yeah, these are the different items that I came up with on different levels, but I haven't implemented them all yet. So yeah, so I guess I haven't done the rest of these, which is fine. But I did quite a few tasks today, so I'm happy about that. The only other thing I want to do, well, first of all, I need to push, push code. And at some point, I do want to host this on uh, GitHub pages. OK, Get status, git ignore. OK, so I'm going to do, OK, git going to add everything, git commit. Uh, let's see, what is today? Code from October, I think it's October 20th today, or it's around here. Okay, I just, basically my commit messages for streams are the date, so the date that I streamed, because I don't know why, but Okay, get push. Sweet. So now I should be able to see if I go back to the code. Yeah, 22 seconds ago. All right, awesome. Oh, it's the 19th. Oh, well, did it in the future. It's the, it's the 20th somewhere in the world, I guess. All right. So yeah, that's pretty much it. I think the app is pretty good. I mean, obviously I didn't get to the, some of these store pages and store items and extra features. So there's a couple other things I can add. Um, yeah, I guess I can add these as to-dos. Create store pages uh, for all items and single items. Okay. And I can drag that below here. 
So yeah, these are the outstanding tasks. And I think, yeah, at some point today, I'm not going to do this live on stream, but I'm going to create a GitHub pages for this so that it can be live and I'll post that in my Discord. So if you haven't joined my Discord, I'll put it in the chat. Yeah, that's my Discord. And yeah, let me know if you have any feedback, comments, anything about the stream. Uh, Discord's usually, that's the number one place I check for anything. So I try to feed every comment into that one place. So yeah, I hope you have a great day and I will see you actually tomorrow morning. I'll be streaming tomorrow morning. Oh, hey, Jared. How are you? Uh, wait, I guess. So dry food, that's how much, um, yeah, that's how much it costs. Okay, so I will update that to say cost as well. But you can see, right, the app is fully functional. But I do have to get to work now, and I will be streaming same time tomorrow morning, so 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, and I'll post about it in Discord. So take care, everybody.